Hey everyone, this is Rob. And Michelle. And welcome to Boon Babe, your usually weekly <laughs> <laughs> podcast and everything you need to know about old school RuneScape. <music> Alright, so this week up on the docket, quite a few things, mm-hmm. uh, including a little bit of a disclaimer before we get into anything. Um, the reason we have been a little bit off with our schedule is because one, we went on vacation and then right when we got back, Michelle actually got COVID. So she hasn't, yeah. been, she hasn't been able to speak very well. Mm-hmm. So if you find that I'm speaking a little bit more this episode, or if it's a little chopped up, it's because she's still going up through a little bit more coughing, but mm-hmm. she is here and I trying mean. to uh, tough it out as best she can. But in case anything does seem a little bit off, it's because of that. Yeah, and also because of that, we are going to be recording this in like two different days. Yeah. So I can take a break. <laughs> yeah, we are going to be doing that. So if it, again, if you hear like a weird break, like maybe we're uh, just... Maybe we sound way more awake tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe we sound a lot better tomorrow. Maybe it's because of that. So uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. But yeah. either way, on the actual docket, we have a ton of stuff. We're not going to be going over fully everything we've missed for because the previous... It is a lot. Uh, yeah, for the previous many weeks. Almost a month. Yeah, almost a month uh, is because... Actually, over a month. We would definitely have like a four or five hour episode. And also, <laughs> um, I think it's a lot of... A lot of, of them weren't even significant. We're just going over the big one. Yeah, exactly. I think a lot of it could easily just be glossed over. So that's kind of what we're going to be doing. We're mainly going to be talking about some of the quests that were talked about and released. Then we're going to be going over and taking a look at a few of the updates that we did miss that introduced a few interesting things. And then we're going to take a look at the Winter Summit, of course, mm-hmm. obviously one of the biggest events of the year for RuneScape. So we're going to definitely take a look at that. <laughs> and then finally, we have um, a little bit more updates for the events as well Christmas as event. yeah Christmas events, as well as the um, uh, more recent blogs. Yes. So with all of that finally out of the way, Michelle, how's it going? going really well should we do a quick rundown of our trip uh yeah we'll just do a quick rundown for anyone that doesn't know we'll quickly summarize if you usually like to skip this part we did go to amsterdam in the netherlands usually we are we are here in southern california but we took a bit (laughs) of a trip there for a little over a week and it was a really good time it was so much fun we loved it we uh got to hang out with our mod alfresco shout out alfresco and their partner we hung out with Yeet Greet. She streams on Twitch. Check out her stream. And we hung out with Duel, one of like our, literally one of our founder subs on Twitch. Yeah, one, yeah, one of our first viewers. Yeah, it was so cool. We weirdly have more friends in Europe than we do in the U.S., I think. Yeah. At least that we've met. Yeah, that we've met, for sure. <laughs> all of our mods in the U.S. live on like the East Coast. So we're like, meh. Yeah, Go to Europe. It's nice because they all live at least not like pretty much just a day's trip away from each other, which is not too bad. Yeah. Like right? here, if we wanted to see most people, it would probably almost certainly be at least a flight away. Oh, 100%. No one really even lives near us. Yeah. But yeah, it was so cool. I We tried like some delicious vegan foods, seen vegan foods that we'd never tried before. We're having like croissants and like French pastries everywhere. It was crazy. It sounds crazy, but. Or it, it sounds pretty normal, but it's... It's uh, crazy to us. <laughs> it's, it's not typical fare that you'd find here, at least. Yeah, we've seen, like, one French croissant here, and it's just fine. Yeah. This was, like, insanely good. Yeah, they were all... <laughs> pretty much all the cuisine we had was very, very good. And a lot of people made jokes that we didn't have any real Dutch food because mm-hmm. Dutch food is known for not being the best, and I'd say you're right. Yeah. <laughs> but what we did try was delicious. We uh, got a, like... Go around and explore everything that we want to explore, except for Cologne. We did not go to Cologne for the Christmas market, which we were supposed to do. Yeah, because unfortunately, I actually got sick in the middle of the trip. Yeah, not COVID at least, but he had like a cold. Yeah, I had a cold, (laughs) so it was kind of annoying, and I was like, I did not want to travel several you know, hundreds of miles. Yeah, so. it was like a two and a half hour train ride both ways. And it was just for the day. So we were like, all right, no Germany. Yeah. It's become a meme at this point. For the past three years, we've been talking about going to a German Christmas market and we still have not. We were right be, next to it too. Yeah, to be fair, we didn't go to the German Christmas market, but we did go to a Christmas market a that Dutch was one. at a literal castle. Yeah, Castle de Har. It, it was really cool. You should look it up. It's, yeah, Castle de Har, it's like one of the nicest and largest newly restored castles in the world yeah and we've never been to a castle before yeah (laughs) apparently that's just like every day for you guys in europe 
Yeah, and it was crazy. It was very, very big. Way bigger than I <laughs> It was like, huge. We didn't not, even get to go inside. Not the castle itself, but the, the, the grounds. grounds. Yeah. We thought it was going to be a small thing, so we showed up late, and uh, it was not small at all. We sure showed up earlier. <laughs> yeah. It like, was so cool. I thought this, like the front area where I'm guessing like they would put all the horses and stuff was <laughs> like the main area, but that was not even close. Yeah, it was massive. We were walking around. I'm pretty sure we didn't see a lot of it too. Yeah, we were walking around for like three hours and we didn't even <laughs> see the inside of the castle. Yeah, and it was freezing and there was not much vegan food, but it was a lot of fun. It was fun. There was a lot of really <laughs> cool like Christmas stuff. And it was ooh, like almost intimidatingly very Dutch. There was not... As much people speaking English yeah. and stuff. Was Amsterdam much, was very English friendly. It was in a much more Dutch part of the country. Yeah. But I got to practice a little bit. I felt so cool on the trip being like, oh, you speak English? Okay. Which is, you speak English? And speaking of you being really awkward and new to things, how was your first ever concert? <gasps> I went to my first ever concert. That was my anniversary gift from Robert. We went and saw Phoenix, who I played like a lot on the stream, actually. Yeah. We went and saw them at a venue that used to be an old church, which is like, the coolest thing. Yeah, we saw ever. them at Paradiso, mm -hmm. which is a church that has an, I'm guessing, an underground club as well. Yeah, there's a lot of people going there after the show. So we're like, all right, there's something there. Yeah. <laughs> which is kind of the most European thing I can think of. I know. Why, why is everything so much cooler a there? A club in an underground abandoned church, essentially. I love it. <laughs> uh, my first concert was so much fun. Yeah, I thought it was a really good concert. And mm -hmm. I, I've seen them before, and this one was much better because they had all of their LEDs and stuff this time around. Yeah, they do nice. like a lot of pretty like light stuffs on the wall. Would recommend seeing them if you can, if you like Phoenix. And... I was just like, I didn't even know most of their songs and I never went to a concert. So some of the time I was like, some of the time I was just like loudly singing and stuff. But the rest of the time I was just like swaying. I was also so tired because we'd been walking all day. I just kept like stretching my legs while we were standing there. Yeah. But it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. A little bit of a skip ahead there. Robert actually uh, told me at the same time about that, that he got me for Christmas tickets to a music festival in LA once we got back so I could see Megan Thee Stallion if you guys... You all probably know by now. I love Megan Thee Stallion. She's my favorite artist. COVID stopped that. And she actually wasn't and did end up going to the show anyway. She stepped out like a week earlier. Yeah. So she heard I couldn't make it and was like, what's the point? Yeah. So either way, her <laughs> Christmas present was ruined. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, Amsterdam's so cool. I 100% after visiting want to move there even more. The public transport insane yeah the public transit is everything that it we could dream of it, um is talked of like it is it is crazy how convenient it all is and inexpensive it all is and it was really nice just like how walkable it is like we'd just be like oh we want to get breakfast but it's kind of far it's like a mile or something but it's like so walking friendly that we would just be able to like do that and it wouldn't feel like anything yeah Whereas here, like, if we walk a mile, we're going next to cars going, like, 40 miles an hour, and it's kind of sketchy. Yeah, like, we could probably walk a mile or two and have passed, like, a f like literally a few hundred, like, places to shop or eat. It was so cool. And all the buildings were, like, all old and pretty. We'd be, like, every street we passed, actually, we were joking, like, oh, well, look at this. It's the most beautiful street I've ever seen. Yeah, because it's all canals and, like, nice old buildings. Yeah, and the old buildings would just be, like, oh, it's an Apple store. <laughs> yeah, like, literally. For what? It or, was it's, just or it's just, like, a grocery store. It was so cool. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so a few other things we did was we saw the Anne Frank House and pretty yes. much every museum that they have. Yeah, Reichs Museum, the Museum of Modern Art, the Van Gogh Museum. Yeah, you could just say pretty much every. Museum. Oh yeah, we saw yeah we saw a lot of museums. There's a couple yeah. more too. <laughs> we didn't we didn't go to the, any of the. There's surprisingly a large amount of diamond museums, but we didn't go to those. Next time. Yeah, we went to all of the art museums that looked interesting. Yeah, we really like art, so that was nice. Yeah. So, <laughs> I literally could have spent all day at Rex Museum. Like, if we do end up moving there, I want to get museum pass and just go there. Yeah, we almost went again, but we didn't have time. Yeah. Uh, I was actually about to move on from Amsterdam without even mentioning that we saw, like, Van Gogh and stuff like that. Yeah, no, we definitely saw all of, uh, well, funny enough, a lot of the more famous Van Gogh paintings are not at the Van Gogh Museum. They're at the... um. 
like the, the one in London and the Louvre, I think, yeah, has a yeah, couple. Yeah, the Louvre, yeah, yeah. They're so, all over the place. Yeah, they're more famous ones like Starry Night. And the, the most famous one, in my opinion, at the actual Van Gogh is the... Um, sunflowers? The Sunflowers, yeah. I, the Sunflowers is my favorite one, though. So I was really happy to see that. I actually have a pair of Vans uh, that had a collab with Van Gogh a few years ago that have the Sunflowers on yeah. them. I should have brought one. No, that would have been cheesy for them. Yeah, they're I like... They're liked- cute, though. I liked the sunflowers, but I think my favorite is the uh, the blossoms. It the was really cool reading about almond, like almonds. yeah why he did that and stuff. It was yeah. like for his nephew. It was just really cool reading about his life and obviously like sad too, but really yeah. informative. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was really really cool. But, we um, really like Van Gogh. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we did anything else that crazy there. Yeah, honestly, like a lot of it was just us walking around because like we've told everyone before the trip was like low-key more than just like doing like big cool things we just wanted to see like how day-to-day life would be there if we moved there yeah that's why we were okay not going to cologne because we just like walked around fondo park and stuff and got coffee and we we're just hanging out and seeing how we like it yeah and i but, love it um, <laughs> what's it called i i guess i wanted to do because i think most people ask like what is your what was your favorite part of the trip I ask yeah. you, what, was your, what was your least favorite part of the trip Oh, okay. Wait, tell them your favorite part real quick that you told Ray. Oh, my favorite part of the trip was <laughs> Yeah, that's why I laughed. Because we went in the winter, obviously. Mm-hmm. It was really cold, but it was, yeah, it, it was, was nice. It was roughly 40 degrees every day we went. Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. <laughs> um, so I think that's about like 5 to 7 Celsius. No idea. And um, so it was, pretty, it was pretty cold. And my favorite part was the fact that we had a heated bathroom. Like the heated floors. The floors were heated. <laughs> in our hotel. It was amazing. Apparently that's like a common thing in Europe. I don't, I don't know. know how common it is, but I've I've heard of it a lot. But it you don't realize how nice it is till you experience yeah, it. Yeah. Every morning didn't suck because I would just go and take you a shower have to wear socks. in our warm bathroom. Uh huh. It was the best. Even if the bedroom area was cold, the yeah. bathroom was always warm. Yeah, it was amazing. It was really cool. That shower is also so nice. Our shower sucks. Yeah. We were impressed. But, uh, yeah, what was your what least was favorite. Least favorite part of the trip. Um, one thing that I didn't like was this isn't this doesn't affect me, but we both noticed the lack of accessibility. Oh yeah. We were talking about like if we lived there and like something happened and we were ever like physically disabled, we would have to move. Yeah. <laughs> I literally don't understand how people could get around in wheelchairs there. Like everything like has steps to it. Yeah, that's actually one of the things I was telling Michelle is the United States are actually surprisingly well known for being one of the most accessible countries or most accessible first world countries like in the world. One of the few things that we excel at ahead of Europe. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, obviously the ADA has done a lot of work in the United States and mm-hmm. They don't have that everywhere else. Yeah, we were noticing that everywhere we were going, we we're having to like step up. And I was just like, dude, if something happened and we ever became physically disabled, like we could live here for a few years and we'd have to just be like, all right, we're moving somewhere else. Yeah, or you would just be stuck inside. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's an issue. But um, supposedly, like some parts of it are pretty accessible. I did look it up. Yeah, of course. But um, at least us as people who are like able bodied, we were like, well, this is kind of weird. Yeah, to be fair, we didn't even see anyone that was necessarily handicapped or disabled on at any least of like the pub- visibly on any of the public transports. They do have the option for it, but we didn't even see anyone mm-hmm. attempt to. It was funny. I happened to see a Twitter thread about accessibility while we were there from somebody like a wheelchair user. Yeah, yeah. But um, for me, I'm I'm definitely gonna say the like kind what seemingly lack of bathrooms. Oh my gosh. Like there were several There's so much less public bathrooms. There there were a couple times where I like was just I needed to go to the bathroom for like literally 40 minutes. Yeah. But and we wouldn't want to go back to the hotel so we were just like wandering around trying to find it. It, it was like a weird thing where like seemingly every restaurant you go to has a bathroom. Mm-hmm. But obviously if you aren't planning on going to eat or going to a restaurant then you have to like try and find a public bathroom which is we saw two the entire time i think yeah seemingly nearly impossible which is just very different from the states where there's bathrooms kind of everywhere yeah or maybe it's just something that like we didn't notice because we don't like read dutch i mean what's pretty yeah. easy to see vc or yeah. WC everywhere. Where it, it's just like a, a really good example is like if you go to like an outdoor shopping center or something like that. They'll have like little public bathrooms. Yeah, there's there's here. plenty. Like if we went to the one that's five minutes from us, there's you know five or six bathrooms. There's a lot of bathrooms. But if you go to the, like an outdoor shopping center in the in the Netherlands, which we did a, quite a few times, there's almost none. 
That we could find. That we could find. Like I said, unless it was an in, issue. <laughs> unless there were inside like stores that we just didn't notice. <laughs> you know, in the same the same thread there, kind of. They have very public urinals. Oh, they do. And only in some places. It, it surprised Michelle because we went to the stadium to buy a jersey for the Netherlands soccer team, which almost for his coworker. Uh, yeah, for a coworker, which they actually almost went to the finals, which would have been really cool. Yeah, we saw them playing actually when we were at a pub with uh, Duel and Yeet Great. Yeah, <laughs> not in person. No, not in person on TV. No, yeah, but um, yeah. So at large public events like the soccer stadium, they actually have like urinals out in the open, and it's it'll pretty much just be like four dudes standing together going you know going pee yeah in the public look it up because it's not like they're like flashing or anything no there's, there's a little bit of privacy but you see them standing there yeah like there's, there's <laughs> no really walls weird. covering them or anything obviously mm-hmm. yeah like michelle said there has like sides kind of yeah but you see their entire back yeah it was so weird to me <laughs> it'd be the same as like walking up to like a payphone back in the day and just like seeing someone standing there, like mm-hmm. it's the exact same thing. That was, yeah, that was weird. And you don't have to pay for it or anything. It's just like out in the open. <laughs> and there's a couple of those, funny enough, in the red light district as well. The red light district felt weird. Yeah. We went during the day. It was it was definitely the most like seedy feeling area out of any place we yeah. went. And we went down a lot of dark alleys. We <laughs> Dark alleys feel so safe in the Amsterdam. It was weird. Yeah. But uh, I feel like... The red light probably would have been cool at night when Soul Tours too. We went during the day. So like it was it was actually kind of funny. A lot of the sex workers were just like hanging out the windows on their phone. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Yeah. And uh but yeah, I think besides that, most of it was pretty cool. Traveling sucks. If anyone ha- sucks real bad. has ever not been internationally traveling, it sucks. Yeah, um, we already decided if we moved there, we were like, Yeah, we'll come to San Diego every year. And we're like, We'll come every three years. Yeah, it, it <laughs> we sucks. don't want to do that every year. It sucks a lot more than I had anticipated. Yeah, it was bad. Which was already pretty high. So, yeah, not not the best. Also, if you can get a direct flight, I'd recommend it. Yeah, if we end up moving there, we should just go to LA and do direct flight. Yeah, <laughs> but um. I th- oh yeah, one more thing I want to complain about. Oh, one more thing. One more thing. A lot of people smoke cigarettes. Oh yeah, yeah. Smoke the smoking culture in Europe is still definitely alive. It was wild. I don't care if you smoke cigarettes. I really just don't like the smell, though. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of points I was walking that I was like, oh, my, I don't want to look rude, but I want to, like, hold my breath. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm more used to it because I had a lot of aunts and uncles. And oh, even, yeah. You had family that smoked. Even my parents that was, uh, for a while smoked as well. So. Oh, really? I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. When I was younger. So I, yeah, I was a lot more used, used to, it. to it. But it did just remind me of downtown San Diego. It's really just, like, really... Uh, congested areas i guess of people yeah. you're kind of just used to that anywhere in the world but i was still surprised by it yeah besides but, um, that uh pretty much everything else was either superior <laughs> yeah good or great yeah we loved it <laughs> yeah it was a really good time definitely want to go back i would like to give a shout out to myself because if i've talked about it a lot like i have anxiety issues and stuff i only felt one anxious once the entire trip just yeah. on the uh plane trip from the east coast to amsterdam i felt anxious for a little bit in the middle of the night and, like, over the speakerphone, they were, like, asking if there's any doctors on board. So I was like, oh, my God. I mean, I'm pretty sure whoever it was, they were fine. Didn't hear anything else about it. Yeah, or they died and we didn't hear anything else about it. If they died and no one said anything, that'd be crazy. Yeah, at the end I of guess the, they wouldn't tell us. At the very end of the flight, rest in peace, Miss Johnson. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. lost in the middle of the flight. Yeah, I didn't feel anxious the entire trip, meeting up with people or anything. It was really cool. Yeah. I feel good about it. It was good. But anyway, should I go on to my account update? Uh, yeah. Yeah. What have you been up to (laughs) in the game of old school runers? It sucks because I actually did a lot and I was so excited to tell you guys, but now that it's been a month, it's not going to seem as impressive. I just want to let you know that the skills that I tell you were mostly done within a week. Okay. Yeah. So she (laughs) has not been playing that much recently. Yeah. I was playing a lot whenever I was like really, really stuck in bed. Yeah. But um, before we even went on the trip, I we actually got so lucky on stream, me and some other people. We got, I think, four purples in one night. Yeah, I remember that. At Toa. I've been doing a lot of Tombs of a Masket now. I've been doing it again. Unfortunately, none of them were like... None the, of them are the staff. The big ticket item. I mean, some of them were nice. So we saw two Missouri bodies. that went, Those were pulled by Annan and Kona. And they were 34 mil each for us. Yeah. And then someone got the Fang, that was Dragon Verse, and that was 12, almost 13 mil each. And then I myself actually pulled the ring, my first purple at Toilet. It was the ring, naturally. No, you didn't. Because then it got rolled back. So you guys know how RuneScape was down for two nights? That was the last night that I was streaming before the trip. Right as I pulled the purple, it had already started acting weird and I couldn't sell the purple. 
Yeah. So, and then I lost it and it got rolled back in. Now I don't have a purple in my account. So she got the light bear and she had it in the collection log, but now she doesn't. Yeah. It took me like a week and a half to be like, wait, do I still have that in my collection log? And it was just gone. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a fairly insignificant item. So it's, I mean, it, it was still like two mil each. No, I mean like price wise. So it's mm-hmm. like pretty easy to realize that you don't have it anymore because it's not like, oh, where'd my one bill split go or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. No, I didn't notice for a while. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, I had some other things to do. That was just before. For the trip even so the other night I've, I've been streaming but i'm doing it very like low-key and consistently because yeah the it's, cough it's really thing. intermittent because of how well her voice is doing mm-hmm. but the other day we did get another purple in toa we got another missouri top and this time we got 41 mil each it's nice. huge everyone's getting missouri tops yeah that's good so that's it's probably one of the best drops you can get that's not the staff the other night that night that i was telling you all that we saw two um Annan and Wraith had actually gone to a raid before I started streaming, and they also got a top. So they saw three that night. Nice. Yeah. But uh, as far as skills, I got so much skills up. I got to 88 mining, 89 smithing, 88 agility, 90 herb, 92 thieving. That one is for Arc Rain. Shout out. 90 cooking, 92 prayer, 88 crafting, and 89 hunter. I started, like, really grinding closer to base 90s. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I was trying not to do stuff over 90, but the prayer was just too easy, so I did that. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, I'm feeling really good about my account and did all you, my skills. Did you use uh, superiors or just regular dragon bones? Regular dragon bones. I was taking them to the wilderness altar just one inventory at a time because yeah. I was sick and I didn't care. Yeah. Until I got PK'd, and then I was using some of my insult heads because I have tons of insult heads. Yeah. And that was actually really fast XP. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it was cool. I, I enjoyed it. And it feels good to be leveling up. I'm really close to being 94 woodcutting too, which is cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. But that is mostly it on my account. I'm also um, 49.3 million farming XP. So I'm almost 50 mil. And then I can complain about how I'm a quarter away to 200 mil with no tangle rune. Nice. <laughs> that's good. But how have you been on RuneScape? This is where everyone gasps. <gasps> what do you mean? Yeah. So I have actually been playing runescape a lot and yeah not an insignificant amount either he's a gamer again you guys i'm so excited like surprisingly enough i've been playing at least 12 hours a day he plays at work yeah (laughs) so um it's kind of a lot but the most it's half your day the most surprising thing is that you're not on your main my new main is essentially not it's it's my GIM now. Yeah, he's playing so, in the GIM. What so I, he already has account progress, which is nice. Yeah. So what I did is I actually kind of, I think the one of the reasons I like kind of stopped playing was because I kind of realized how insignificant gold really makes a lot of things in this game. Because mm-hmm. I don't know, it just it, it always seemed lame to me that you can just like buy progress for practically everything in the game. Yeah. And so if you get drops and money. <laughs> and so I. I figured why not just do Iron Man because one, I already had a fairly progressed Iron Man because I went like really hard for a month or two. Yeah, we were really into the GIM. You and, started a uh, video series on it. Yeah, I was actually going to restart that series. Um, potentially. Yeah, potentially with this account. Ooh. But um, it's you funny because I'll just be like, all right, don't know. Uh, just act like nothing happened. Be like, all right. And so we here we are. So this week. <laughs> so this week. Just, Eight months uh, later. <laughs> yeah, like literally. Wait, that would actually be so funny. <laughs> yeah, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> you should do it like that. But um, either way, so I actually went uh, super hard and bought an entire year of of membership for <laughs> my GIM. No takes these backsies. Because it's it's pretty hard getting seven mil on your GIM. Oh my at, god, every two weeks. At least at a at my level, it's pretty hard. Bonds are so expensive right now. Yeah, so I just went and bought the twelve month because why not? I ended up buying the twelve month too because I am tired of having to buy my own bonds plus the giveaway bonds. Yeah. So um yeah, I've been playing a lot on my GIM. So I guess I can give some update. I'm actually doing agility on mobile right now. But grind never stops now. I started around thirteen oh five total level, which is kind of crazy. Kind of huge for the GIM. Yeah, because I only played for like I said, it was a little over a month, and I was able to grind out like nearly or now up to ninety uh, fire making. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm ninety two combat, and I got from level ten to fifty four rune crafting. And, <laughs> as you got to fifty four. Yeah, in just like a couple hours, and then I gardens of the rift is so good. It is. It's actually so fun. All the mini games make GIM so much easier. 
And it's funny because I was telling Michelle that while I don't like how I, I still don't like how easy um, the, the rune pouches. Yeah, because they added like the rune pouch repair thing. Oh, at, the rune essence pouches, I should say. Yeah, the rune essence repair option. If you pay like 25 pearls or whatever, then you can repair them. Yeah, without... if you guys remember, Robert was like, oh, this is kind of too easy. Well, yeah. And so you can pretty much like null and void doing lunar diplomacy at Guardians of the Rift as long as you, mm-hmm. you know, are paying for the up or for the repairs there. And I still don't like it. But who are you using it? It does make it extremely easy yeah. to be there for a long time. Oh because my God, I, bet. I mean, I can only imagine just doing like you're <laughs> just doing Gardens of the Rift one inventory at a time with no pouches because they've all Ew. like broken on repeat. But um, yeah, so it's really nice. Gardens of the Rift is really good. I've been doing Tithe Farm. I also did um, some Temporos and Winter Tot. Temporos, <laughs> Winter Tot. Got a bunch of stuff. And I've just been doing... The minigames are so good in this game. I love them. They're crazy good. They're insane for They're so much fun, too. And I've been doing quite a bit of agility recently because I'm trying to get to 70. I mean, you're not even that high of agility. I'm 69 and a half now, which is cool. Michelle keeps looking at me because she wants me to tell you all the big news. At 67 agility, a.k.a. 570,000 experience, I got... The agility pet, uh. <laughs> which for anyone that doesn't know, between both of our mains and both of our GIMs, we this had is, no skilling. This pets. is the only skilling pet any of us have ever got. Yeah, he had Phoenix, but that's a mini game technically. Yeah, so pretty pretty lucky. I was like one out of thirty thousand chance. Yeah, so pretty pretty lucky account. I got it. Yeah, like sixty seven yeah. agility. Just a reminder how I have forty nine mil farming XP. Everyone. <laughs> yeah, I got it last night at work on mobile wait my text to you though yeah she she thought she thought it was someone else's pet and i was just showing i her. literally said to him i know that's not yours <laughs> yeah i thought he was just showing me the hat it's so, a little christmas hat it was pretty cool because i didn't even realize that i got the pet i was just like so focused on doing my laps at sears that i was doing them and then i opened up the the group chat because it was flashing and it was because alfresco and our gim was congratulating me <laughs> so oh my god pretty cool pretty you're b- back for like a week and you get a pet yeah pretty big account upgrades i went from 1305 to 1385 oh wow um it hasn't even i think it's only been four days since i started playing again so my eyes like twitching because you already got a pet. Yeah, easy. I'm at this rate. I'm just gonna get Dude. a pet every every week or two. Every four days. <laughs> every four days. Oh my god. But uh, yeah. So big account progress, and I have like a lot of goals that I'm going towards right now. But do you want to um, share any of them, or are you keep them on the down low in case they change? I'll share the more um, the immediate end. ones, oh, I okay. guess. So I'm going for 99 fire making right now. I'm 90. I'm also gonna get. Um, 71 farming so that I can do thieving at Master Farmers. Mm-hmm. And then I'm also um, just getting 70 agility now so that whenever I go to cut the teak hardwood on Fossil Island, um, I'll have an easier way to bank them for whenever, for whenever I want to do construction. Yeah. He's so, realized construction is going to be a whole endeavor. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's something I want to focus on, too, because the teleports are obviously a really big deal. Yeah, they're huge. And you don't get a jewelry box until 81. Oh, my God, that sucks. Yeah, but, I mean, I'll have teleports sooner than that, so that's nice. That's true. Yeah, so that's uh, kind of all my news, all my big news, I guess. Yeah, but like we said, we are recording this over two days, so tomorrow he's probably going to come back with, like, three more pets. Yeah, at, at least three more pets. In 20 minutes, he'll be like, oh, guys, so it's tomorrow, and I got a Tangle Root. If you got ting on you, <laughs> I would be I'd be happy for you, but I'd be so annoyed at my RNG. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, this old thing. I feel like anytime I farmed ever, he would probably just be like, oh, you still farm? <laughs> Imagine having tangle root and Stop or it. not. Imagine. <laughs> yeah, so that's been pretty cool. I've been enjoying my time back, just uh, grinding away. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy that you're playing again. Yeah, it's been pretty fun. But um, besides that, I I guess I have kind of played other games, but really not of mention like i've played like some more minecraft um uh, valheim actually has a new hmm. big update so i kind of want to play that soon but a lot of my friends that i usually play games with are playing world of warcraft because there's a new expansion that came out recently 
So yeah. Nice. I think I'll play after everyone's tired of that. Oh, I also um I've been playing Sims three since I've been sick. Yeah. It's easy to play in bed. But uh, I think that's about it. We can move on yep. to any actual updates that we have this week. Honestly, that was still like half an hour of us talking. But considering we missed a month, I feel like that was pretty quick for us to go over updates. Yeah, I think we... That's like usually on, me on a normal week is taking half an hour. Yeah, I, I think I try to make it as concise as possible. Because mm-hmm. usually we try to make it longer on purpose. So that so we don't care about keeping concise because, you know, there's never any updates. Yeah, yeah. Usually <laughs> we try to make it a little bit longer, but if we're trying to go through it a little bit speedier, then I think that is uh, a good uh, oh, a, a good flow for us. That reminds me, I actually have two more things to say real quick. Um, we're doing a holiday giveaway on Discord, you guys. Underneath the normal giveaway channel, there's a holiday giveaway one. So we're going to give away um, the winner's choice between a piece of the Boon Bait merch, a $25 Steam gift card, or five RuneScape bonds. So go and uh, react on that post if you want to enter. And another thing, we really were talking about how, like, there's not much longe- longevity. Longevity? Longevity. Longevity um, with our episodes. So we are thinking, like, for next year, like, stuff that we could do that's different other than just weekly updates. So let us know if, like, any of you guys have ideas. Yeah, we already have ideas of bringing guests on to... Yeah, we already know a few people we want on. Kind of, like, pick their brain on whatever update it is that week. Yeah, because we're only two like of that. us. Like, we don't know what other people think. Yeah, but... um, <laughs> That wouldn't be every week, though, so... Yeah, so we do have some ideas, but let us know if there's anything in particular you'd like to see, you know, pop yeah. up on the podcast, whether that be certain guests or certain topics or anything like that yeah or if you like if you just like the weekly updates how does so far just let us know like yeah i think that this is fine yeah if you like this format yeah let us know that too yeah we just we need feedback because <laughs> yeah. yeah. we've been told by we've been told by a lot of people who should have guests so that's something we want to do for sure we just weren't wasn't sure like who to ask but now we're realizing we actually have a lot of people that we could ask yeah we do. streamers and just people in our community who don't create content but are still chill in and play a lot yeah yeah so we could do, do that for sure yeah but let us know your thoughts and then we can be with updates yep so we will be starting with an update that actually i'm not too familiar with because i have not done it but it is the gardens of death quests yeah so i could go over this one because i actually did the quest so in our newest twisted tale you'll piece together a long lost language and unravel the mystery of some ancient ruins welcome adventure to the garden of death this quest contains no dialogue and focuses solely on environmental storytelling, so make sure that you set aside some time and prepare to be fully immersed in the world around you. You'll need 20 farming to start the quest, and you can begin the investigation at the campsite south of the Lizardman Settlement in the Kevo's Lowlands. And I, okay, this quest, I tried to do a guide list, and it was fun. It was so much fun. Oh my god, it took me forever. It sure did, and I also I had to cheat for her. It took me four hours total. Because I was doing it without any help. So it's a lot of... That's like all they really say about the quest. Because it's like... um, I think it's like medium and intermediate length or something. But it's a lot of just like trying to guess what words are based on context clues. And it tells you where to go. And you're just like wandering around like Kevos and Lowlands and stuff. And uh, it was a struggle. Yeah. Robert did have to look up one word for me. And there's for, no way we would have guessed it. Yeah, for it. anyone that has done the quest, the part where you have to decipher the word knowledge slash mind. No way we would have guessed that. Yeah, that was... We were trying to guess that together we, we for like guessed, 20 minutes. We guessed the other ones, but not that yeah. one. No other ones we weren't able to figure out except for that one. I mean, some of them took us a really long time, though. Yeah. <laughs> like, we were sitting there for a good half hour probably going over them. Yeah, at least. But uh, it was actually like a really fun quest. And it made me excited for more quests. I wish that I would have kept going. I don't want to say like spoilers. It just gives you farming XP at the end. But all you need is secateurs for it, which you can get during the quest. And it's a lot of like roaming around and like reading secret messages. So I thought it was really, really fun. But that's actually not all the questing news that they had. So we voted, if you remember, overwhelmingly in support of improved XP rates for quests. Yeah, because the XP rates for quests kind of suck. They did not match what they should have been. Like, there's obviously some well-known quests, like uh, Witch's House, House, (laughs) Witch's House, (laughs) as well as uh, the Waterfall quest. Those are known for being some of the best, like, XP reward quests in the game. Mm -hmm. And besides that, they're just... Obviously, there's some here or there, but like if you're doing higher end quests, you're like, 
oh, this gives XP, which I guess is cool, but I really just want it because it unlocks, you know, the D-Sim or something. Yeah. It's, like, significant. Like, Song of the Song of the Elves, like, it went from, like, 20,000 XP rewards, multiple skills, to 40,000. It's, like, doubling it. Yeah, so... I only leveled up, like, two skills from this. Most of my levels were not from this, but I actually did get a couple. <laughs> yeah, so for anyone wondering what the total was, people actually did the math, and if you have a quest cape, then you will have gained an extra over 1 million XP just from quests. And you can actually get that just by going and seeing Purdue. Oh my gosh, I didn't realize that some of them you can't get from Purdue. Like you have to go to random people at like the Legends Guild and stuff. Ooh, I have more XP coming in today, you guys. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, go check out this uh, post if you haven't done this yet. I'm sure a lot of you already have because this is from last month. But I was so excited. I did this at the airport. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely a welcome update. Oh my gosh, yes. All right, so alongside all of that stuff, they also added stuff that we voted on previously, which is going to be the combat achievement rewards. Ooh. So this actually passed a little bit ago, but for anyone that doesn't remember, they actually added quite a few things making the combat achievements much more worth it, in my opinion, than... Uh, definitely it was before <laughs> um so for easy they made it so you get twice as many warrior tokens from the guild uh you also get an additional accommodation point at the pest control uh, the upper limit for boss layer tasks has gone up to 40 from 35 and for the medium diary they increased the warrior tokens by 200 percent, and they also made it so that you get an additional two points at pest control that's <laughs> I regret doing pest control green logging already. Yeah, this huge one, at least for thinking about my Iron Man account, <laughs> uh, you're no longer affected by the prayer drain while at Barrows while using Gommel's Hill. Do you think he'll go and get the hill before Barrows because that? Because that's kind of huge. I feel like medium wouldn't be too bad. I it wouldn't. Yeah, I've I feel done like it. hard can be kind of annoying. Hard, on I'm Iron still Man. working on. So, yeah, maybe. They also made it so that it increases your cannon. Uh, it can hold 35 cannonballs. I didn't which even is nice. remember that one. That's nice. Um, the upper limit of of the boss slayer task has gone up to 45. As far as hard goes, you can imbue everything at the Nightmare Zone or Soul Wars for 50% less points. Huge. If I ever get the Red Slayer Helm. Now you gain three additional commendation points at Pest Control, which is more than half <laughs> if you're doing the Elite Boat. Yeah, Pest Control does not give you much points. It's actually kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, the cannon can now hold up to 45 cannonballs. Kill count for the God Wars dungeon has been reduced to 36. And <laughs> Like a Boss is up to 50. So these are all for the hard combat achievement diaries. For Elite, they now made it so bracelets of slaughter have a 10% chance, as well as expeditious bracelets have a 10% chance of recharging instead of breaking. That's massive for Slayer. Yeah, so that could save you some time and money. Uh, they also made it so superior monsters have an increased spawn rate to 1 in 150. Instead of 1 in 200. Now your cannon is doubled and holds up to 60 cannonballs. This is so cool. I mean, I'm not even close to finishing a leap, but it is cool. Same. And now they also increased or decreased the amount of kills at God Wars Dungeons needed down to 30. And again, increased like a boss to 55. Uh, second to last, the Masters. They made it so the thralls that you resurrect from the Arceus spellbook last 50% longer. It's a huge upgrade. These are so cool. They made it so that the Gommel Hilt can now be used to combine itself with the Avernic Defender for a cosmetic upgrade if you want to do a little fashion scape. I haven't actually seen what that looks like. I need to look that up. It looks really cool. Nice. Uh, the God Wars dungeon has been reduced again from 40 to 25. Like nice. a boss has been increased to 60, so nearly double. And also there's a new ammo slot item, <laughs> Gommel's Lucky Penny, which gives you a 5% chance not to consume charges from items such as jewelry, Offhand equipment like the Tome of Fire, or when worn with charged weaponry such as the Trident of the Seas, or even the Scythe of Viter. So this would work with my uh, staff. What's the staff called? Um, my bat. The Sanguinesti. Yeah, my Sanguinesti. Yeah. So all I have to do is master any, combat achievements. Any charged item has a five percent chance not to consume charges, which over you know ten thousand charges is going to save you a lot of time and money. Oh my god, yeah. So that's going to be really nice, but you are unfortunately going to have to trade this off for something like a uh, 
a blessing. So Yeah, it would be in your ammo slot. Yeah, so if you don't need the extra prayer, then that's cool. Or if you don't want the teleport, then this will definitely... Honestly worse. Yeah, definitely help you out. But um, it definitely might not be worth it in some cases. Can you imagine how much blood runes I'd save with saying when SD doing chambers? Yeah, true. My gosh. And finally, Grandmaster, for all of you real tryhards. <laughs> they made it so the thralls resurrected now last 100% longer. So it's pretty cool. They stay Double alive, the time. <laughs> yeah, twice as long, which is really, really long. Uh, the Gommel Hilt 6 can now be combined with your Avernic for even more flash. <laughs> um, and the last two is God Wars has been reduced to 15 KC in order to get into God Wars, which if you have Grandmaster, I don't. See Honestly, ever going I still back think to I still think it should be like five. Yeah, I don't. You finish Grandmaster, you. It should just be free at that point. Honestly, maybe. Uh, I don't see anyone going back after they have Grandmaster unless they want a pet to green log it. Yeah, and finally, nearly doubling like a boss from thirty-five to sixty-five because awesome. we all know once you get Grandmaster, you're gonna want to do more bosses. <laughs> said, said no one. Uh, so that's kind of. Cool though. A lot of those I think are really cool. And like I said, I think they're like way better incentives to actually do them. Absolutely. Reading yeah. these again makes me be like, God, I really should finish my hard ones. Yeah. <laughs> and there are some, like I said, for the medium that makes it so Pharaohs is a lot easier. Yeah, for, that's huge. For like new GIMs like me, that's a really big deal. So definitely. Yeah. That makes it a really cool, really cool deal. Yeah. Speaking of combat achievements, they also added nearly 50 combat achievements to Tombs of a Masket. So they don't list them here, so you have to go and make sure in game, like, do I need to go do these updates to reclaim my Zuck Helm? Yeah, yes. I was actually I didn't know. I wasn't sure. They don't I don't even think they say here whether your Zuck Helm gets retained or not. I think some people were losing them how to redo it because some people were saying like finish combat achievement for the second time and wearing their Zuck Helm. Uh, in that case I think it's kinda lame. Because for anyone that doesn't know, I mean you probably know because this has been out for a while, but um, you did have to do, if you do have to do all of these to get your Zuck Helm back, one, I think that's lame. And two... Makes me feel stressed for the hardcore that achieved it. Yeah. <laughs> and and two, there are some master combat achievements that require seven other competent players to do. Oh, yeah. There's an eight-man Toa. Yeah. It's crazy. So Dating said that he went and did that, and it was, like, so sweaty. They yeah. didn't even make it. Yeah, it sounds really, really annoying. And I, I'm not a big fan of any of the required group content for achievements or anything yeah. like that. I mean, I'm not 100% on it, but I think that they did lose it. Or maybe there's, like, a little bit of a window of opportunity to catch up. Yeah, like, I think it's an achievement, no doubt, but I feel like it is, like, a separate achievement. Like, I feel like Combat Diaries is, like, shouldn't be a test of, like, how good your friends are. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. That just sounds ridiculous to me. Yeah. Because now I'm, like, I need to find, eventually, I'm not even close, like I said. I need to find, like, seven people who are gods at it to go with me. Yeah, like, I don't, I mean, obviously, people, like, a cold one that just hang out with, like, other good players, that's not too crazy for them, but. I hang out with good players, but I don't know if anyone's that I, good that I, I know. think. I think for the majority of us, we have like one, you know, that one good player that we know. And then like, who's a like couple, crazy and carries the team all the time. Yeah. And then like a couple other that are like kind of on par with you. But there's, I mean, it feels like there's no way that everyone knows seven other really good players. Mm -hmm. I which, agree. I mean, obviously the helm's not meant for everyone, but it just seems kind of like unfortunate, un unnecessary. <laughs> Yeah, they should instead of being like, I'm pretty sure it's eight people total. I'm not 100%. I'm almost certain it is. But um, they should have been like, over this amount. <laughs> so you have at least some options there. Yeah. But oh well. Uh, and for the next thing they added, this was actually pulled a little while ago, and it is the Poison Dynamite. So most of you all are already familiar with Poison Dynamite, which we first offered in Pull 76. For those of you who aren't, Poison Dynamite is a new weapon which lets skilling peers secure kills when necessary without gaining any combat XP. Players can now use their fire making skill at 50 or above to craft untradeable Poison Dynamite from one Dynamite in three cave nightshade. Once assembled, simply place the Poison Dynamite on the ground and light it as you would a pile of logs to deal damage in a 3x3 area. For a more precise attack, you can also stick the Poison Dynamite to your target by using it on them. Using the dynamite in either fashion will net you a bit of fire making XP. Nice. Yeah, so I'm not going to go too much into the specifics of it, but it does a little bit of damage, zero to six. 
and uh, it has a chance to poison the target. So if you are a skilling peer, this is going to help you get through some of the more annoying parts of the game that <laughs> I don't even know how you'd get through before without yeah, literally. Like, doing some bug. I think it was some weird exploit bug but that they fixed, and this was their recompensation for that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, one more thing I needed to mention, that downtime for a couple of days. Uh, everyone should have a couple of days of free membership now in your... Uh, your RuneScape messages. Okay. I still haven't claimed mine. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I tried to do it on mobile and it didn't work. <laughs> it just wouldn't let me click messages at all. But yeah. check your messages. You should have a couple of days of membership. Okay. Um, and finally, they did make some changes to the Pulse 77 changes. So they added a few more. Actually implemented some. Yeah, so they made it so that you can go uh, back to Ape Atoll after Monkey Madness 1. Uh, to complete Monkey Madness 2 without accepting Darrow's training. This is for people that are uh, peers, peers or have specific accounts, so this will help you. Uh, clue, scroll, clue scroll drop rate boost earned from combat achievements now apply at the Hallowed Sepulchre. Uh, iron players may now buy and sell ores at a fixed price from Orden's shop when it's overstocked. This nice. is a really good change because obviously they couldn't do this before. <laughs> you can just be SOL if you needed some ores at the... I think this is the the guy at the Blast Furnace. Yeah, I think so. Um, players can now set their default player-owned house teleporting to build mode. This definitely saves you quite a few clicks, so that's nice. Mm -hmm. Players can now disable confirmation messages for charter ship payments, which I actually took uh, advantage of recently. I didn't know that was from this, but that's really nice. <laughs> and finally, another big, huge quality of life thing. Actually massive. I've been appreciating this a lot lately. Charlie the Tramp now embraced the phrase, beggars can't be choosers. So he will actually allow players to bring him requested items requir acquired by any means. You don't have to not, go fishing anymore. Not just from yourself. So. <laughs> he did that. <laughs> yeah, that's really nice. It's actually worse than the easy ones. Yeah, and for anyone that um, cares or is interested, I think it's already over by it is already this over. point. But you can still go back, obviously, on YouTube and check it out. But EVScape had their, yet again, Battle Royale. So you can go check out their YouTube for that. I think they did this in collaboration with OSRS mm -hmm. this year, which is nice because this is the first time that they've actually sponsored their work. They also um, have now started season three of Gilnor Games on Soup's YouTube channel, which I am actually watching Gilnor Games now, and it's so good, and I love it, and I would recommend. I'm a behind a week, so no spoilers, but it's so good. Yeah. And uh, we usually would have some great news to go over uh, for this patch, as well as the one after this, but unfortunately, they ended up uh, pushing back the wilderness boss rework so it was scheduled for this year actually it was scheduled for earlier this month in particular but they are pushing it back until the end of january or um yeah until january 2023 they didn't mm -hmm. say exactly when so that's um that's kind of why the patch notes are light for the beginning of december is because of that yeah and a little unfortunate but i mean if you didn't see this happening, then you have never played this game for longer than a month. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. There's also some cool merch that I'm that they're selling for Christmas and stuff like that. Yeah, they so, got some cute uh, stuff, some cool new t-shirts. Yeah, so make sure to check that out. Moving on, we have a little bit of more quest relevant stuff. So this is actually the quest running batch number three. Yeah, so we're going to go... We're going to finish going over these quests. Then we'll talk about the Winter Summit and then more recent events after that. Yes. So they say, get ready to put your pedal to the metal with some red hot new quest speed running options. A taste of hope and sins of the father are coming out of beta. Woohoo. And then they just go over the uh, trophy times that you need. So platinum for taste of hope is 29 minutes. Platinum for sins of the father is 54 minutes. Uh, that took me hours. Yeah. That's, hours. That's kind of crazy. They also slightly tweaked the trophy times for Beneath Curse Sands. So now like the platinum went from 28 minutes to 27. Stuff like that. Just a little bit lower, which is kind of stressful, but okay. They're also launch betas for two further quests, Below Ice Mountain and Temple of the Eye. So you can give us your feedback before they launch next year. Being like next month. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of unfortunate because I know some people are probably having a blast with this. But every time I read this kind of stuff, it just feels like such dead content to me. I actually like it because I I do plan on, once there's smaller quest out, I plan on going and getting the outfit. Yeah, I mean, eventually it would be really cool to get the outfit and like all the other rewards they offer. But mm 
every time I see them announcing new stuff, it just it just feels bad because I know when I go and look at the world tracker, it'll show like one person in the speedrunning worlds. I saw somebody make a good point because one person was like um, basically saying like, why are you doing this? There's barely people in the community. And someone was like, yeah, just because there's barely anyone, it doesn't mean that they should never get any content ever. <laughs> no, I don't think they should. It's it, just, recognition. it just is like, I don't know. It's just they should do other stuff too. I don't know. It's just like a weird thing mm -hmm. where it's like I kind of feel bad that I like am like not interested in it at all and feel like it's just like like dead on arrival. But I think it's cool just because I did Platinum Time for Cook's Assistant. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like I said, it, it is cool content, but it, it'd be kind of like getting big updates for like RS3 is kind of mm -hmm. what it feels like. It's like that's cool that that's happening for whoever is playing that but i just i, I can't care i don't know <laughs> it's yeah just, it's kind of like a weird thing no that's fair another thing that was similar to quest that maybe we should go over is the christmas event yeah sure and also for uh ju just to close out the speed running update th that's it the update was really small <laughs> that is it. because it was supposed to be the wilderness rework but like i said that was pushed back so there's yes. pretty much nothing besides that mm-hmm all right, so like we said, moving on. The Christmas event is out. Go check it out now because it's only going to be here until January 11th. So you can begin this event by speaking to Gus Mistletoad. You'll find Gus hanging out around the red carpet on the road connecting Barbarian Village to Falador. This ambitious dwarf has his sights on the hottest pub for NPCs, the Nutcracker. It's an exclusive spot with festive drinks, treats, and more. It's all he's ever dreamed of, but there's one problem. Santa won't let him in. Santa hates him. <laughs> Actually... Being exclusive and all, the Nutcracker is only accessible to those who prove their worth in a series of challenges known as Santa's Festive Games. You press Santa and you'll get access to his secret tavern. If you don't, you'll be joining the long queue of NPCs trying to get in. And this holiday event was uh, developed by Mod Halo. And it's amazing. I like it. It has some really cool rewards that I'm going to go over. It's like nice because you're actually kind of doing like little tiny games in it. Which yeah. I thought was fun. And it's the, like mini mini games. Yeah, mini mini games. And the Nutcracker Pub at the end, by the way, I want to find something comparable in real life because I want to just go hang out there. Yeah. It's just a really Christmassy little pub. It's going to have candy canes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And there are some funny lines about like the dwarf, like, spoiler alert, he gets into the pub at the end. Wow. And he's walking on really drunk. And then one of the waiters is like, does he know this is non alcoholic beer? Uh <laughs> but yeah, the fashionscape, spot on. It's called the Nutcracker outfit. And it's one of those things that you could change each piece to a different style. So there's two different like vibes for it. One's more gingerbread. One's more like red and green Christmas. It has a metamorphosis. That's the word. Yes. Thank you. They also have two cape slot items. One is a sack of coal that has a frowning gnome child on the back. As it do. And the other one is a naughty or nice list cape. It's really cute. I actually loved it a lot. I thought it was a lot of fun and just like cute little outfits. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that is about it for the Christmas event. I would recommend going checking out because the fashion shape's adorable and it's just a cute little vibe. And there's little snowballs that you could pick up. And I guess that because of this uh, content creator, I think her name is like Julie something, you're able to AFK picking up the snowballs because she said she wanted to have a green stack of them oh, <laughs> and cool. requested it. And they're like, sure, whatever. <laughs> so what a, just a cute little collection log. What a weird thing to want. <laughs> I, I know, I love she, it. I wonder if she'll get a green stack. She That's probably has it already. She asked on the day of. <laughs> That's a million. That's a lot. She has time. Okay. <laughs> All right. So moving on and uh, surprise, surprise, it is another day. Burr, 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 so we actually have a couple more announcements, uh, a quick mid intermission <laughs> announcements. Just a quick little break. Uh, yeah. First off, this is going to be out late. Because I went and got my RuneScape tattoo, my second one. Yeah. This one was chosen by the Twitch chat. It was a sub goal. I got a purple chambers chest and I love it. I love it so much. But people on Reddit have other thoughts. Someone yeah, said it's really thought. bad. I need a new artist. Someone else said cringe. I think that they deleted that. But um, other people were being nice. I shouldn't just make it sound all negative. People were being nice. Somebody said that it kind of looks like a cursed mimic chest. It does. And if, they're not wrong. It, it looks exactly like a mimic chest. It actually makes me like it more. And the only difference is <laughs> this one doesn't have teeth. That is the only difference. It's like the smoke, because she kind of did like smoke looking like it's coming out. But once I looked at the mimic, I was like, oh my God, it kind of looks like it's tentacles. Yeah. So I'm not mad about it. I still love it. There's yeah, pictures but, on um, um, all of our social media. What What was the final two? 
for the Oh voting. my god, that and the baby this, chinchampa. This was voted on in our Discord. Over the course of like a month, everyone got to suggest one thing if they wanted, and we voted on a winner. And the runner up was Robert's idea, baby chinchampa. Yeah, it was like seven round robin rounds of votes. Yeah, and it was fun. I, th- I still think she should get the chinchampa anyways. Honestly, if I get the baby chinchampa in game, I probably would get Tachi to celebrate it. Well, duh. Some of the ideas I do intend on getting someday. Do <laughs> get a tattoo of it mid hop. <laughs> mid hop? Oh my God, wait, that'd be so cute. Yeah, I know. I'm looking at my arm, like, where can I put it? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm really excited about it. That um, also last night I got five levels in thieving and got to seventy, so I'm actually two away from fourteen hundred. Let's which is go. Cool. Actually, I think I might have no, no. no I think I'm still two away from fourteen hundred. I got ninety four woodcutting too. We nice. both leveled up. <laughs> yeah. So just a couple updates, and we'll move now into actual stuff that we game were updates. planning on doing, which is a game update. Quick so. <laughs> update intermission there. Yeah, so this first one is the Gilnor Gazette. And actually, I haven't read this, so I'll let Michelle take it yeah. away. It's the Gilnor Gazette for November-ish 2022. So if you guys remember last month, we actually mentioned how there hasn't been one in a second. Yeah, and it's funny because earlier this year, they're all like, oh, we'll try to stay as up to date as possible doing it every month. And then like slowly... They October <laughs> went by, November went by, and we're like, oh, I we're guess they <laughs> just aren't do- guess, guess they just aren't doing that anymore. So they do go over that a little bit. They say, as you've no doubt noticed, we're a few months behind in the Gazette, and there's a good reason for that. Some of the more recent editions of the Gazette were looking a little empty, and as we prepare for Winter Summit, there's been less and less we can talk about here. We've seen that you're not happy about this, so we want to offer you the opportunity to shake things up a bit. And basically, they're just asking, like, what do you guys want to see in the Gazette? Like, what do you want to see monthly? And they literally have a survey that you guys can go and submit what you want to see. This sounds very similar to us earlier in the episode saying, what do you guys want to see in the podcast next year? Yeah. I mean, this is pretty easy for me because I think, obviously, the thing that gets people most hyped up Mm -hmm. is stuff that they're working on because... Yeah, I just say little previews of things. Even if it's not coming out for, like, two years... Little stuff gets everyone hype. Yeah, but also I feel like that's kind of like a hard line to walk for them because obviously they don't want to be like, oh, we're working on like this thing and then it either never comes Mm -hmm. out or it like people like it a lot and are kind of expecting it and it kind of like ruins whatever hype there would have been. I feel like they could talk more about stuff going on in the community, like um, talk about like different artists and stuff, do more artist highlights. Yeah, they could highlight community members. If they want to, uh, like, co-do things with content creators, they could talk about, like, the Gilmore games and stuff, I guess. Yeah, like, if, I mean, if any of the developers, like, let's say there's a game jam idea for something, like, for a new mining thing, and then they, like, talked about it last month, maybe they can, like, if, Expand on if it. there's ever been any, like, progress on it, like, if they talked about it six months ago, if there's been any progress, they can be like, oh, this is, like, some progress. Maybe there's, like, a concept picture that they can put up. Like, yeah. any anything. I don't think it has to be long. You can just no, do a short one. Yeah, anything that would be, like, showing what they're working on, It like, I think that goes a long way because often whenever there's no Gilnor Gazette or no significant updates. It seems like nothing's happening. It seems like they're just, like, sitting on their hands, yeah. which is, like, not... Just not demotivating, but kind of like not just uninteresting, but also like uninspiring for like the it's player like, base. We know logically they're not doing nothing, but show us a little sutton sun. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> obviously the the development pipeline has become much slower over the years. Like we're not mm-hmm. getting skills every month, we're not getting quests every month. Some somebody listening, not good. Some <laughs> some entire quarters of the year we don't get anything, mm-hmm. which. Is I mean I guess that's fine if that's the new like development pipeline yeah. they have planned out, but at least show us updates so it doesn't seem like you're just not doing anything for an entire quarter of the year. I agree. I might actually uh, respond to their survey thing and say something like that, like just show us updates of what you're working on, give yeah. us little previews. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's I mean it, it doesn't have to be long. It, it's kind of annoying to ask that because that's kind of like a boss thing like when your boss comes by and is like yo what have you been up to just so that they know they're not wasting their money like on well, you well for a $50 membership a month yeah. i feel like we deserve it no i mean <laughs> yeah it's kind of just like yeah like what have you been up to like yeah. i don't know i just want to see some kind of progress i want to be able to see gilner gazettes every month when i look at the news <laughs> 
Yeah, and yeah, I definitely think even if you have very little to go on, there should be some kind of Gilnor Gazette. It's and kind of like the podcast. We'll do it every week. If there's nothing, we just like talk about accounts more, do more Q and A's. Yeah, or go over Reddit. <laughs> yeah, like a, like an easy like an easy one is like we were saying. Like you could just easily highlight the community and be like, oh, this is what they're doing. Like this is kind of stuff that's going on in the community. Because like obviously we know what's going on in the community, but if you aren't like just plugged in, then you're not going to be knowing. Dude. So. That, that's like an easy one. I feel like before TwitchCon, like before TwitchCon, I didn't really follow that many fellow creators, like RuneScape creators. And I was like so unplugged to it. Like I didn't know anything. I didn't know what GG meant when people said Gilnar Games. Like I had no idea what that was. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, you didn't even. Uh... Don't. Don't. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Michelle doesn't know a lot of things. There's an acronym in the game I didn't know that I just found out, and I don't even want to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, they're very basic acronyms, <laughs> but um, either it way. It's very embarrassing. Yeah, I don't know. It's just like, yeah, if you don't have much to talk about, find something to talk about. Like, there's there's ways to do that, mm -hmm. and you should have something every month because... It, I know they got more interesting stuff than we do. It, it, gives, <laughs> it gives something people to look forward to, so it's like, if there's something that you're expecting every month, then and it doesn't happen, it's it's a letdown, regardless of how like trash it would have been. For sure. But they do have quite a bit in this one, which is nice. Yeah. So we're going to start off by talking about the second Game Jam, which took place in November. Yeah, the aforementioned Game Jam. The Game Jam. So if you don't remember, Game Jams are their new ideation process where JMods across the team join forces and create awesome content pitches, which sees creativity come from across all areas of OSRS. So they did end up having like a live stream discussing this in more detail, but they got some sneak peeks at a few of the projects here, and I quite like some of them. Just yeah. remember, though, all these are just concepts. They might not happen. Yeah, it's actually likely they will never happen. Yeah, what about the dogs? Yeah. The other game jam, they were talking about dogs. When are those coming? I mean, I think I they, they did say that that will come eventually, but... I Honestly, I love all the ideas that they share. I mean... <laughs> Wraith pointed out last night because I was talking about like how I always vote in the polls and how I like new content and stuff. And uh, Wraith was like, have you ever voted no on anything in the polls? And I was like, yes, I'm not mad about being a yes man. OK, I don't know if I've ever voted no. No. What yeah. do you think? I mean, I don't know if you have. I definitely have. But but I don't think I ever have. Well, yeah, because I don't think I don't think you fully think about the repercussions of all of your votes so i'm stupid no i just i just <laughs> think you're all like oh yeah that sounds cool i want it instead of like oh yeah that could ruin this part of the game for some other players even if it doesn't affect you fair yeah <laughs> stuff some stuff i like wish i didn't have the possibility to vote because if i have the possibility to vote then i like to vote yeah. but i'm like just take it away from me <laughs> yeah anyway let's get into it so they start out by talking about some new hairstyles. Uh, should I go over which mods it was? Um, yeah, sure. So mod Moogle, Halo, Elena, Shroom, Hen, Bruno, West, Skylark, and Jerv all worked on new hairstyles, which is funny because there's almost as many of them as there are new hairstyles. Mm -hmm. So they say character customization is an important part of any game. So for this game jam, we create we focused on creating a new selection of player hairstyles and some further customization options. Over the course of the week, we made 16 styles based on popular player suggestions. Though, should this project make it to release, we'll definitely add some more. And they have some cool things. Like, they have, like, a mohawk, little braids, a just, like, different ponytails. Uh, actually, like, multiple mohawk styles. <laughs> yeah. yeah, some mullet styles. Yeah. It, they have some really cool stuff. I actually like these designs a lot. They have, like, side cuts for, the like, the woman models. They, have, they like... actually say that every hairstyle is going to be unisex. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And they have like pompadour hairstyles, like an OG, like top braid kind of Viking style afros. It's kind of cool. I do like how they say everything's unisex and then went ahead and put the female and male characters for <laughs> the hairstyles on the pictures. Yeah, I'm sure that's just <laughs> how they envisioned it. Yeah. So to unlock these new styles, you'll actually have to embark on a small quest that introduces you to a new hairdressing NPC. You'll help them to find the perfect place to set up a boutique in Varrock, though they may have to deal with the current owner of the building, a shy hat maker who loves crafting community-designed accessories into wearable fashionscape items. And the NPCs are really cute looking. Yeah, Emma and Susie. <laughs> Emma and Susie. They kind of look like uh, they're supposed to be like twins, and one's like the more edgy one with a shaved head, and the other one's well, like shy. Yeah, one of them literally has no hand and a scissors as a replacement. Yeah, and the other one's just wearing her little hat. They both have orange hair that's why i was like they look like twins yeah you're like oh they're the exact same person <laughs> yeah 
After completing the quest, you'll have full access to a range of new hairstyles in the Fashionscape Accessory Shop, which will both be located in a currently unused building next to the Virac Museum. We hope to use this as a hub for future item design con contests, as well as potentially setting up a hairdressing mini game that allows players to unlock even more styles. And I, I love this because it's kind of like the banana hat that yeah. people voted on before, so I'm assuming that like you would buy it from this person. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, it's so cute. And hopefully that means that they'll add like more community designed items yeah even though you know i feel so weird about that because they're not paying people for their ideas <laughs> yeah that's true it's a bittersweet thing so they go on to say that we have a lot of talented artists in our community who often propose their own concepts and item designs we love to give players a way to wear their creations as cosmetic accessories by hosting design contests at the boutique and they go and show a few examples of what finished items would look and they're just amazing like a really tiny cowboy's hat a Bob the Cat hat, like a, what kind of hat is that called? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. A hat. And just like a giant, or not a giant, just a regular mole, like snapback. Just all these things. I love it. Yeah, they're really cool hats. <laughs> Cute little hats. We also took a look at the current hairdressing UI. It's overcrowded and players have mentioned that it can be difficult to see what you're getting until you bought it. As a result, they've created a new UI that solves these issues and gives you a 360 degree preview of your chosen hairstyle, which is really nice. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. That's funny. I never really had a problem with the haircut thing. Well, mostly also because you're wearing stuff on your head, so it kind of doesn't matter to me. Mm -hmm. But I'm I really like these new hairstyles. Yeah, the like, new one I want to change cool. it. Yeah, you, there's <laughs> actually a lot of colors to choose from. Yeah, and I like the half shaved one. <laughs> we all know how the world of OS works at this point. Shop trees for wood, buy tender boxes at the general store, milk cows for milk, you know, basic stuff. But what if everything you knew was wrong? So we are going to talk about the OSRS randomizer, and this idea is by Mod Nin. The OSRS randomizer would see the whole game turn on its head. Chopping trees get you nothing but burnt sharks. Shops sell medium clue caskets, and tender boxes are only obtainable from fishing. Lumbridge is overrun with Dagonauts, and hang them with your sword grants you smithing XP. And the cows? Somehow they've acquired a piece of the map to Crandor. Of course. <laughs> randomizers have become a popular way to replay familiar old games and i wanted to see if it was technically possible to make such a thing work in osrs there are so many items and npcs in old, in old school that if they were all randomized it would take an entire community to figure out even the basic quest but that's what makes it such a cool concept every week your save would be reset and the world re-randomized and the world re-randomized items and npcs would all move to different locations where they'll stay for everyone for the whole week and everyone began a new version of Lumbridge trying to check off tasks on their randomized bingo card. And I think, I'm assuming, they don't even like really specify, unless I missed it, that this would just be like a separate world. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's actually all they had to say about it. There's really not a it's ton It's like an here. additional it's game just, mode. It seems like a very brief concept, which, mm -hmm. um, I mean, it seems like it'd actually be a really interesting idea because there's practically infinite replayability yeah i think if they obviously this would be on a different set of worlds but um i think if on those worlds they had like 10 or 25 times xp that'd be really cool if it's only for a week yeah i'm sure it's gonna be crazy yeah because it'd be like all right are you just gonna kill cows and get smithing xp for <laughs> like i don't know how long like how like <laughs> i don't know how it would just take forever to level up normally so it'd definitely have to be accelerated Honestly, also, I think that'd be so cool because I could just imagine people's video series for this. Yeah, <laughs> also probably like five times drops and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it would just be like a wacky world, which I think would be cool because, yeah, like just doing a quest would be ridiculous. Yeah. If like you had to kill like Dagonauts to get like a... Uh, yeah, milk. <laughs> and then like kill Hydra for like an egg just to do, <laughs> you know, the very beginning quest. I would actually, I kind of love this idea. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, Obviously, really it cool. wouldn't have any impact on the main game. If anything, I'm sure they'd probably just reward like a little fashion scape item or something. Yeah, I think this would be cool if it was like a like a permanent thing because I I really do get tired and dislike the idea of like, like leads. rotating things that happen. Like they're like, all right, we're doing this game mode for one month. I'm like, all right, cool. So you just spent two years working on this one month long thing. That's really lame. Well, what do you think of the idea of it changing just like once a week? No, I mean, that's cool. But if they just leave the world up all the time. Yeah. Oh, so. No, I'm assuming that they would. That's what I'd hope. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. 
Because then it could just be like, you could do it on and off whenever you're bored, don't feel like grinding. You're like, let's go mess around in this weird world. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that'd be cool because it does seem like I said it does have a lot of replayability. Yeah. So if they could just do that. I like cool. the pictures because it's just showing like the most random like monsters all standing next to each other. Like a little baby mole next to like Anku and guards and ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> it's It just looks like it'd be fun. Next up, we're going to talk about the agility improvements. This is by mods Arcane, Dylan, and Goblin. For this project, we looked into run energy itself and proposed a couple changes. So first, buff the rate at which energy regenerates, energy regenerate. Two, change the rate at which energy drains to scale off of the agility level and scale harder with higher weights. So without going over a bunch of math regarding the formula for energy drain and regeneration, we'll drop a few comparisons below. So to compare how energy works in live game versus our proposed rework, we calculate a ratio of restore rate versus drain rate. At each agility level and weight, this weight this ratio can be compared between live and proposed, so it can understand how agility levels and weight will affect going fast with our proposal. So at a glance, I'm just going to give you guys some examples. Like if you're at one agility and you have one kilogram of weight on you, there will be a 150% buff to your run. But if you have 64 kilograms on you, there will be a 17% nerf of how fast you run out. And that scales up to 99 agility. If you're at one kilogram, it'll be 153% buff. And 64 kilograms is a 48% buff. So essentially, it seems like they just want to make weight and level a much bigger deal. Honestly, I kind of am okay with making agility level have you have more run. Yeah, because (laughs) it makes it more worth it because who wants to go get 99 agility? Obviously, it helps now. But not nearly as much as you would think spending, you know, three or four hundred hours on agility would agility actually is a do. really slow skill. So I'm totally for buffing that a little bit. Yeah. It wouldn't even be like that huge of a amount. I mean, I just spent, I think, like 10 hours the other day <laughs> getting, like 70? getting six levels in agility. Yeah. Because that's as fast as it goes. Like <laughs> there's no faster way to get agility. And like I won't notice a difference. Truly. They say that ultimately the aim is to get you running more often and running earlier while trying to improve the value of agility levels. I would like to pause for a second also to say that I feel like that could turn some people off of the game in the beginning. Oh, absolutely. This is being like, oh my God, I can't run. Well, this game sucks. I'm going to go play something else. Yeah, because I mean, if you, obviously if you, this, it's a totally different game, but obviously if you look at World of Warcraft, as the game got bigger, they made it so that you could ride mounts sooner. Yeah. At first you could ride mounts at 60 and then you could ride mounts at 40. And now you can ride mounts at 20 because mm-hmm. the world just keeps getting bigger and bigger and they add more stuff and you have to travel further away. So it's like, I don't know why it, this hasn't changed sooner. That's why people ask for mounts in the game because yeah. it is so annoying running around without any teleports. Yeah, especially like if you don't have the nostalgia, you don't have the drive to play the game. Someone just told you, hey, try it out. That's just going to be so annoying. Yeah, they're all like, <laughs> they're like all right, cool. You got to go to Falador to go get something. It's like, all right, cool. I guess I'll just be running for literally 10 or 15 minutes. No, because you're going to be walking for 75% of the <laughs> Well, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, it's, yeah, it's just. It's actually really annoying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, it technically wouldn't take that long. That's obviously a little hyperbole, but. it would, Not by much, I feel like. I think for a new player, that's not unreasonable especially if you get attacked by a highwayman or guards or anything like that no like i love this game and whenever i have to play a new account i feel so annoyed yeah so as somebody who's like not already attached to the game it would just make me not want to play yeah i think yeah that's that's definitely one of like small tedious things like that they don't make the game fun they just make it (laughs) annoying yeah they say on top of all this we took a look at some of the ways we might alleviate some of the issues new players have with agility and runji including a new low level agility course a potential reintroduction of rest stops and even making agility a free to play skill i think there should probably be free to play only who could vote on that i'm I, okay with it but i know that the community is apparently very picky i think it should be a free to play skill because oh i definitely think it should but because it, yeah. it matters <laughs> to free to play players no, they can't buy stamina's, right? No, no you can't buy stamina. You can, yeah, you can buy agility, yeah. or uh, yeah, energy, energy pots. pots. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, the, those kind of suck. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, because I mean, yeah, obviously you're running a lot as free to play because you don't have nearly as many teleports and mm-hmm. stuff. So I don't know. Yeah, you don't have any tabs to use. When... You can't. Whenever I run, this is actually why I ended up paying for a regular membership, like I said earlier. Because whenever I run out of a bond and I'm on free to play, stuck in the middle of nowhere with no teleports, I am so upset. Yeah. I am so annoyed. <laughs> yeah, like getting to even, yeah, like 
Varrock is kind of annoying if it's you don't have, if you're like, oh, I just spawned in. Let me use the tab. Oh wait. Oh wait. Or me, I'm like, oh, I have some runes. Oh wait, they're all combined. Yeah. Or it's like, <laughs> oh, let me go use a, you know, the a tree or a fairy ring. Oh it's wait. Like, oh wait. Yeah, this sucks. I yeah, I love the idea of making it free to play, but I didn't realize that a lot of free to play players like don't want stuff to change. So. I don't know how they feel about this. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I don't stay in free to play, but whenever I am there, I whenever I am, I am annoyed. I wish I could have agility. Yeah. So the agility course they're talking about was actually um, a lumber agility course, which would be level one to ten. I feel like this makes a lot of sense because yeah, because the lowest one's in gnome stronghold, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Because they had to add to a members area, and you had to have um, I like uh, what's it called? Yeah, you have to have like at least level five or something like that. Or, yeah. is, or is it I level think it's one? level one, but it's you have to do a quest to get access there. Okay. Yeah. I, it takes a while. <laughs> all I know is pretty much no one ever starts from level one. Like you have you, everyone just does the quest. I think everyone would immediately start training their agility if they're done in Lumbridge, which yeah. is not a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if if like what they're proposing, I think it all works really well together because I think all these mods are actually pretty good mm -hmm. at you know, thinking about the game because obviously you'd spawn in, then you're like, all right, what is what does level 10 agility even mean right now? Pretty much nothing. But based on their new system... That it, would Yeah, they'd buff it a little bit, so it could be better. It'd be... At, at level 1 agility, it's a 150% increase if you're not carrying anything. Like, so, that's massive. I mean, if you're a level 10, it'd even be higher than 150%. So Yeah. That, yeah, that'd be a big deal if you're just able to grind out the first 10 levels real quick. I, I really like that. Even if they don't make it free to play, they should just add a free or another course in Lumbridge. Yeah. Also, this next idea is, I think, really cool. Yeah. Do you want to go over the rest spots? Uh, I, yeah. So. Yeah. You know what's funny is all this stuff, I by the way, I didn't see anyone talking about, like, even while we we're on a trip, it seems like no one talked about the game jam. Only people were talking about the Winter Summit. Yeah. <laughs> Which I thought there was some it, interesting stuff here, too. I think the Winter Summit kind of overshadowed a lot Which, of things. Which, yeah, you guys will see it was pretty exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so their next idea in, this is all in one similar concept. So mm -hmm. um, that's why it just seems like one big thing. So they're thinking about also, it'd be cool to add rest spots, which mm -hmm. are composed of like cooking fires slash fire pits. And these are kind of just like chill little areas that NPCs, uh, provide exposition, exposition for new players while breathing extra life into some of the space between points of interest which so, is cute i i actually like it whenever i run somewhere and i notice like little guys just hanging out for the first time yeah i think that's one of the coolest things about rpgs in general is whenever you just stumble upon like some random guy like a little area yeah and it'd be yeah it'd be even cooler if they just like start like talking to you about like interesting stuff that might help you out in the game yeah i like this but uh either way so this makes it so that your base run regen rate while resting is a hundred percent of your uh, restore per tick, so it just doubles the restore rate. Also, players can use fire making to increase this rate even further. That's cool. Increasing it by 30% per log tier, scaling up to U logs for 250% extra uh, energy per tick. So, seems like it could go up to 350% energy per tick. Obviously, all of these numbers are just completely random. <laughs> but um, it seems like a generally good idea if you want to wait a few seconds instead of walking to your next destination. You can wait, get your energy back, and then maybe you just... You go, like, refill your water. Yeah, yeah <laughs> take a break in real life and then go run the rest of the way. Uh, you can also use lit fires to slow roast food. Um, this one's so, interesting. Yeah, so you can obtain untradeable and unbankable cooked versions that restore energy, kind of like strange fruits, although, of course, those can be banked. Yeah, I'm imagining it's like very small amounts, just like strange fruit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the highest tier of log does last longer, allowing players to chef up more slow-cooked meats. I think that's really, really interesting and I think would really help, um, especially Iron Man or people that have less money. You know, obviously, you're not buying stamina. Oh, yeah. It takes a long time to make stamina, too, right? Because... Essentially, these are agility potions, mm -hmm. or um, I always call them agility, energy potions. Yeah. So essentially, you'd be crafting up low-level energy potions, which obviously they're not tradable and they're not bankable, so it'd only be worthwhile while you had it. But if you're planning on going somewhere really far and you're like, oh, let me stop by here, make some food, and then do the whole journey in one run, that'd be yeah. pretty cool. I mean, you'll probably have some more rest stops along the way, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But yeah. I, I like this idea. I think it's actually pretty good. I mean... What I was thinking, because I know with everything, people are going to complain. I was thinking it's kind of like the uh, the heart region prayer, you know? 
Yeah. <laughs> so it's not too crazy if you compare it to that. Yeah, it seems cool. Next up, we're going to talk about the OSRS Tower Defense. This idea is by Mod Arcane, Mod Husky, and Mod Mac. And just like a half little break, see here to remind you all, these are all just ideas. They might not happen. So Tower Defense has been a popular game genre for many years now. So we used our game jam time to think about what that might look in OSRS. We looked deep into the systems OS already has, the different skills on offer, the combat system, and more, and designed a tower defense game that would synergize with these existing mechanics in your character's progression. And tower defense... I've never played a game like that, but I'm assuming it's just you're defending tower from waves of enemies. Yeah, it's it's a really really popular genre. Like one of the most popular one is uh, tower defense balloons. Um, I think it has. Wait, like, is that the one that you played? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, really really popular game. Obviously, a lot of mobile games are like this, but uh, it seems pretty cool. Yeah, it seems like you would spend um, some kind of metal bar as well as planks in order to place towers. At and least then, in this little idea. Yeah, and then they would, you know, fight whatever enemies happen to be coming. Yeah. So seems seems like a pretty simple and pretty cool idea. I don't know if it'd be a mini game or whatever, but yeah, because yeah, you sure those are more like idle games almost. Yeah, it, it seems kind of fun. Maybe they would add it with just like maybe cosmetics only or something like that. Yeah. as rewards. I do love the fashion scape. Yeah, it'd be cool to find like a new way to just sink your time into the game. Oh yeah. Whenever you get bored. Speaking of fashion scape, that was it for the tower idea, by the way. <laughs> Next up, we're going to go on to the custom outfit loadouts by Mod Squid. With a copable item slipped between players' banks, different housing storage options, it can be difficult to remember where anything is, let alone experiment with different outfits or quickly equip a specific outfit. With a stylus beer, a new bedroom furniture item, players can access all the equipable items they own from one location and filter those items by slot. Finally, dude. It's... Every time that there's a holiday event, I like to dress up and all my stuff is split up everywhere too. And yeah. it is so annoying. <laughs> I'm saying finally because obviously they've always, not always, but for a very long time now, everyone says, you know, Fashionscape is like end game. Fashionscape is uh -huh. obviously but what, there's no easy way to the reason people play. But yeah, Fashionscape is such a big deal, but they've never had a good, like they've never actually taken steps towards making it more actually central to the game. Yeah. Like, they're like, oh, here's these hundreds of items. Hopefully, you have, one, storage for all of them, and two, like, them sorted properly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This just seems like finally a long time coming. I hope they add something like this. Oh, my God. Same. They, they do say, though, like, it doesn't allow players to bypass the distance factor. You'll actually have to go and get your butler to retrieve the items that are stored in their bank when you're finalizing the selection. But, I mean, it's still huge. Yeah. I mean, was that just, a, like, a 1,000 gold or whatever? Something yeah. like that. And they add as well, additionally, the mirror won't let players save outfits as preset loadouts that can quickly be switched between. So I guess it's more for like combat. Yeah. Stuff. <laughs> I mean, I would even go so far as to say items with like no stat increase should essentially not take up a bank slot. Uh, I wouldn't disagree. Yeah. Just I don't because like that'd be the same as having like not even feathers because feathers are useful. That'd be the same mm -hmm. as like having a, 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 blank, a blank spot in your in your bank just sitting there but yeah, it takes up a cosmetic. slot but it's just a blank spot true on my chompy bird headbands yeah because they don't do anything yeah like, there's no the only thing i could think of is like there is a sweater for halloween that <laughs> counts as warm clothing in winter tot which i used as a gim so like maybe that wouldn't count but anything that has like literally zero use i think there's because they don't give you unlimited bank space which is crazy to me yeah. But um yeah, the fact that also the uh, like I said, you know, dozens and dozens of fashionscape items do take up slots is kind of crazy. This would also be huge if if it's implemented like this, they might change this with fashionscape only, but this would be great for gearing up for a boss because sometimes whenever I'm gearing for bosses, I take like a really long time. Yeah. Yeah. Even with my tab I take a long time because it's just like setting it up is annoying. So this would be really handy. Yeah. <laughs> or they could add something like that to a regular bank outfit. I mean it's not that big a deal, but yeah, it can it can take a while to gear up. Mm -hmm. I tried to do. Oh, I also did an entry level uh, top last night. Yeah, so I died oh, to yeah, versus. Yeah, it was entry. Oh wow! That's... But it was actually really good practice. I feel okay. like I understood some of the mechanics better, but um, it was so easy on entry. But I still died yeah, to versus because I don't know anything about her fight. Oh really? Yeah, but I think I... her fight is really easy except for the last part. I, I just don't know it. I've never watched a video on it because I like learning by doing. And it's just going to take a lot of doing to get used to Versic. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but um, 
Yeah, it was taking me a long time to gear up. People were just sending me like screenshots and I was just trying to copy them as best as I could. So a loadout would have been perfect. That is it for that. Now we're going to move on to the Wilderness Expansion Revisited by Mod Sofan. Yeah. Sofan? I don't know. Sofan? Sofan? I don't know. This game jam, I returned to my passion project, the Wilderness Expansion. I also spent a bit of time polishing the artwork between jams. I've had lots of community involvement in this project, especially surrounding the boss and what they might drop. The rat boss. Rat boss. Best boss. I mean, some of the bosses look way cooler. It's very obvious. It's that way more detailed than they last spent time. More time on the models because some of them look really good. If you guys don't remember, we talked about the wilderness boss rework, the last game jam. Yeah, so I was, I was going to say like seven months ago or something like that. This so. is something that I don't know if they've confirmed, but I feel like this is for sure going to get added to the game. Uh, yeah, hopefully. I mean, it seems and it's like it's a wilderness update. People s- want that. It seems like it's taken a lot of time, so hopefully. But I mean, it is a huge project. It is. It's like tons of new bosses and all these different areas. It's just, it's really cool. Yeah, tons of new bosses, world bosses for the first time ever, underground bosses, a dragon boss, new dungeons, new items, new weapons, maybe a Torva ornament kit reward. Yeah, entire new villages. It's and, so cool. There's a also, free for all PvP area. Yeah, free for all <laughs> PvP area. Obviously, new bosses in the already existing areas. Mm-hmm. So, I want the rat boss. Yeah, there'd be a lot of stuff. Yeah, it it looks amazing. They just provided an update that they basically have gone into more detail for that. That's something that like I I feel like really certain that at least parts of that are going to be added to the game. Yeah, because it's not like they're even interesting anything new. They're just like doubling down on the idea and being like, "Hey, here's more art." It kind of yeah. feels like inevitable. It just looks like a more fleshed out version. Yeah, which is cool, and it looks good. The Torva recolor, amazing. It's like black and red and very yeah, pretty. It's, it's like a sanguinesti recolor. It's funny. The color scheme doesn't work with where you get it because <laughs> you get it from Nex, but it looks good for Theater of Blood. It does. Yeah. <laughs> Next up is the community event support. This is by Mod Light and Dylan. We worked on ideas to highlight and manage community events better from both a player and Jmod perspective. We think a community flourishes when players feel connected to other players, so our project was all about ways we could improve the game by recognizing, promoting, and rewarding positive community behavior. Our first idea was the Party Popper, a new tool for Jmods that builds on the functionality offered by the Rotten Potato. The Party Popper includes all the fun transmog options from the potato without the riskier options, so nobody will accidentally kill all the players in a given area. The Party Popper would also let Jane once bestow an event organizer tag, which would appear above player's head and in the chat icon space. For 24 hours, they'll be recognized as an event organizer, perfect for organizing marches or other big group events. I was thinking that would have been good for Hanani's event if she yeah. had a little group organizer thing. Yeah, that's cool. It's not like huge, but it's kind of cute. The second idea was to repurpose the Varrock Herald to include notable community initiatives, giving players the chance to see themselves and the amazing events they organize in print. Yeah, this is kind of what we're talking about earlier about stuff to show in the Gilnor Gazette, just showing more like community things. And this sounds like a way that it wouldn't just be like the huge community things, like Gilnor games and stuff. Yeah. Stuff that doesn't give you billions of gold, like maybe some smaller stuff. Yeah, I think the next sentence is uh, really cool. In the same vein, we'd like to create a notice board button on the UI, which advertises community run events managed by the CM team. We've explored a few different ways to get community event support by Jmods, including a survey system and a process where players can view upcoming events or apply to have their events listed. I'm glad that you have to apply because there's going to be a lot of like gold selling things. Yeah. People trying to do that. Yeah, just random <laughs> stuff like that. Lastly, we were interested in creating automated broadcasts for events. With engine support, we could take a leaf out of our Big Brother RuneScape's book and advertise events as soon as they start on the relevant worlds. That would have been cool for Pride and stuff. Yeah. I or, slept during it. I don't know if they did anything. Or but. just like anything, really. Like yeah. if, if someone's starting like a like a, a worldwide, and I mean like world as an in the game. So like, mm-hmm. a, like a 470 world, um, like bingo game or something like that, where they want to include everyone, but obviously you can't tell everyone that you want to give them yeah. gold for doing bingo. <laughs> then um, I think that'd be kind of cool. I think this is actually such a good idea. And speaking of bingo, they do want to say that they understand that many players would like them to focus on making clan bingo official. They've explored the possibility, and unfortunately, this is not a small project. It would involve lots of tracking on player characters, which would add up to months of technical work for just the bare minimum. So this is unlikely to be something that they explore in the future, although they will look to see if they can repurpose the league's tracking systems for later use in a bingo-type minigame. Yeah, I think that'd be that's kind of a really big ask. I literally you, don't know how it would work. <laughs> if you think about it from like a developer expect like experience, one they'd have to track 
every player that gets invited. Every and drop. they'd have to essentially track a second collection log for them. Yeah. And they'd have to limit what you could even add to the bingo. Because like some bingo things are like kill a boss, which are easy to track. And then some are like get a golden tench. <laughs> yeah, some are like just do this random thing that like it would be just be so impossible no. to track unless they like put a it, lot of work into I it. I could see like the league tracking system, something like that working in the future, but I think that sounds like it would take a long time to get figured out. Yeah. Next up, port management. This is by Mod West. So Fermanic Port Manager is an extension to the existing Kingdom Management minigame. You gain access through continuation of Kingdom of Miscellanea questline, where you'd be tasked with building stronger relations with the neighboring kingdom, etc., etc., by helping them establish and manage their own port. The quest will cover the basic game loop by having you set up the port, hire some crew, build a boat, and send the whole caboodle out on missions. This is funny. This is really, uh, I think they're taking a lot of um, inspiration from like, other management type of games, which mm -hmm. is, I mean, surprising, surprisingly a popular genre. So yeah. that's, that's kind of cool. So they say that this is a, would be a chilled out mini game, which lets you check the state of the port at your own pace. Resources from Kingdom Management would be usable in the mini game, and there'd be a mix of resource rewards and cosmetic non tradables. You could show off to your friends how far your naval empire has spread. Always leave it to the people from the UK to spread their influence. Stop. <laughs> They say that other rewards could include discovering new islands around the map that you could travel to with your crew. These islands would offer a variety of content, from new training areas to new mobs with unique drops. An example of a cosmetic item could be something akin to the Needs Not Face Guard with a darker color palette. That'd be cool. Because be really they cool. have a, a look here where the Needs Not helmet actually matches your bandos for the first time. It looks really nice. It looks pretty good. Moving on to the Holiday Island. This is by Bob Tide. Holiday Island will open for visitors whenever a holiday event comes around, although you have to compete the event to gain access. It'll be themed to whichever event is currently active. Below are some examples of how it might look during the Christmas event. And they just have a little snow, snowman and say, Snow Way, the boys are back. And they're just holding like little weapons with armor. Yeah. It's very cute. But it would not just be a themed island. There would be a lot of activities that you can take part in when you're there. First up, there's some creatures to battle. If you like the looks of their weapons, you can try to acquire them yourself by defeating the beast or accumulating points. To buy them. Yeah. I think this is kind of a cool idea. It's funny because they actually do something really, really similar to this um, in Maple Story, surprisingly. Where Wait, we kind of talked about this in here in the podcast before. Didn't we? You talked about like kind of like seasonal things where, I mean, spoiler alert, we're about to talk about like a holiday tree. You were yeah. like talking about stuff like that before. I don't remember, but yeah, I don't know. They do something uh, like this in Maple Story because they have events very often in Maple Story. That's kind mm -hmm. of the reason that people come back to play. So, but every time they do, there's like a very separate like area you can go to that's like specifically themed to there. They have specific it. quests to that area and as well as specific rewards to that area. So I always thought that was kind of cool. So yeah, that sounds really cute. So, okay, I mean, what I was just saying about holly trees, they say that there are also trees and fishing spots where you could train and gain resources. Take your ice-covered logs and frozen fish to the bonfire to thaw them out or completely burn the logs to more XP. The resources you gain from thawing are based on your level and the relevant skill. you also find holiday implings, a boss that spawns every 30 minutes, and a holiday stall where you can thieve some ill-gotten holiday goods. Participating in holiday island activities will gain you holiday points, which can be used to buy rewards in the shop. We'd like to add one or two rewards for each holiday event, and the exciting part is... They stick around even after the event's over. So if you miss the Christmas event, you could come back at Easter and fill out your collection. Yeah. And I, I think that's so cute. I yeah. think that's really cute. This is it for the game jam. I obviously, like I said, I like you all like of everything. it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did think overall it was pretty cool. Um, if it does seem like we kind of glossed over the wilderness thing, it's because they didn't go over it much. We already went over it. They didn't go over it very much. But the, to be fair, the graphic for it is really cool. So mm -hmm. if you are interested, I'd recommend checking it out. You'll on, probably put uh, that on YouTube in archive. our description. Yeah, it, it, it is a really, really cool um, graphic. Their art has obviously leveled up for it. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so definitely check it out if you are in the wilderness. And then moving into the big news. The big boy. The thing that we said did overshadow practically all of this news this winter was the Winter Summit. Burr, 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 burr. So for anyone that doesn't know, the Winter Summit is the brother or relative of the Summer Summit, which <gasps> is what we usually used to have for RuneScape, which would show 
everything that we were planning on having for the next six months to a year. Yes. And um, so this is no different. It just happens to be happening in the winter this time around. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the reason that this overshadowed everything is because it's always really exciting to see a roadmap of what they plan on having out in the coming year. Yeah, you guys are going to forget all about the hairstyles in Holiday Island after we talk about this. Yeah, so um, <laughs> this is uh, pretty exciting, obviously, because they did announce quite a few things, some very big quests, as well as some very big changes and additions to the yep. game. But um, some controversial decisions. Yeah, I would say to uh, tame your expectations because I was slightly let down by this. But um, obviously, you'll have your own opinions. Mm -hmm. So they do say that as a refresher, we put together this handy summary of everything we talked about on the stream. Of course, the you, winter summit was a stream. It was a stream, <laughs> and uh, we were not here for it. But uh, there's also a load of other stuff like the Wilderness Boss Rework, still on the cards for the first half of 2023. Mm -hmm. You'll also notice a handful of poll questions artfully sprinkled throughout this blog. In accordance with our swanky new poll charter, a lot of these are green light questions, which just gives us permission to start working on the things we spoke about during the summit. For example, there's a poll live right now asking whether you'd like us to add a new skill oh, to the game. Oh, that's already done. That's already done, and also, <laughs> I don't really think we talk about that too much here, but that did get the most votes ever voted in any vote ever, nearing 200,000 total votes. Yeah, so spoiler alert, guys, we're going to get a new skill. <laughs> yeah, we are getting a new skill. It was voted 80% in favor of getting a new skill. Obviously, we don't know what it is, but it is going to be happening. And We'll um, talk more about that. We have some ideas. Yeah, I mean, it is practically seven to eight months away for a new skill to even happen at least people are going to be discussing this for a long time i wouldn't be surprised if they push it back to a full year for I agree. it to actually i mean even just get decided i wouldn't be surprised if it takes we are a picky a community <laughs> yeah so i wouldn't expect to see this anytime soon so but it's still exciting knowing that it's up there yeah um, either way, though, they added the new skill, so that was their big mic drop for this <laughs> year, and they want us to help design it, of course. Yes. As we mentioned above, there's a poll live, and we, like we said, it already passed, and besides RuneScape actually being invented, it was the most voted on poll ever. Whether you voted yes or no, it was the most. I think it's so funny, because there was obviously a lot of haters you know 20 percent people said no yeah of course which is a, a significant amount considering that's nearly twenty thousand people mm -hmm. but uh people were um just like talking about before because you know that to pass the poll it used to be 75 percent and they lowered to 70 yes and there was this one person i felt kind of bad because they were getting a quote retweeted basically a lot yeah um on people making fun of them afterwards because they were like they only changed it to 70 so that they could add a new poll. Like, there's no way it's going to be even close. And then it was 80. It would have passed regardless. Yeah, I mean, it's just, that's just like some hater talk. Like, you don't have yeah. to say rude things like that. So, I mean, yeah, you'll just get retweeted like that. <laughs> it's like, I feel bad for them now because they were getting made fun of a lot. But it's like, all right, you're being unnecessarily hateric. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but we have some skill ideas. Did you want to go over them? Um, I figured now is as good as time as any to go over the skills. Yeah. I like how got. I said later, and then I was like, as in two minutes from now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Most all of these are Robert's ideas. Yeah. Well, since um, the poll did pass while we were, you know, on a... I think, on route to Disneyland. On a drive to Disneyland, which is two hours. So we had quite a bit of time to, like, theorycraft some stuff that we thought would have been interesting for yeah. the new skill. Mostly Robert theorycrafting and me typing because my throat hurt, so I couldn't talk. <laughs> yeah, so I tried as best I could to come up with what I thought was original ideas. The only yeah. stuff that I thought I saw that were good-ish ideas that other people thought of were, um, well, I'll just go over them now. Yeah. So the first one that I saw that was a pretty good idea for, um, I thought of this as an, as an original idea, but I have since seen it a couple times, so I thought I'd come up with or bring it up here, and that's going to be some type of animal husbandry. I like this. For anyone that Anything with cute animals. For I anyone like, that obviously. doesn't know, animal husbandry is a pretty common skill in other games, and it's just the breeding of animals. Yeah, and that could work in many different ways. It could be related to, like, cooking if you have your own farm. Well, yeah, this... this 
would be very akin. And just so you know, none of these are actually fleshed out in design. We literally just made this up like we said on the way to Disneyland. Yeah, I, I didn't make these <laughs> up, but I did think of them in the terms of OSRS. So I think they would be pretty easy to flesh out into actual skills. Mm -hmm. So, um, but they just aren't here. But yeah. yeah, animal husbandry would be very similar to how um, summoning works in OSRS or in RS3 rather. Not exactly because I think summoning is pretty busted. <laughs> but um, yeah. Yeah, I think if they added summoning as itself, they'd probably adjust it a little bit for Rune's yeah. OSRS. Like, I mean, just a, like a really easy concept is like maybe if you, I don't know, bred horses or something like that and then went and like fed them, you'd get like a movement speed buff or I don't know, just something yeah. really simple like that. To be fair, we were thinking of these before we read about the energy buffs that they might do. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Um, but that could be related to a lot of things. It could also be related to like farming and stuff, which is kind of morbid. You kill your own animals. Yeah. The other uh, other <laughs> good one cows. that I saw that would be a pretty cool idea is um, honestly just straight up dungeoneering. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of people said They're... sailing, which in my opinion is just like a more convoluted version of dungeoneering. Can they combine both of them, you think, to be something else like exploring? It just... I, it could be, but also it just seems like way too much work. Like, I just don't know how it wouldn't be a mini game. Yeah. I'm not saying it can't be. I'm very uncreative, honestly. So I'm like, I'm really open to any idea because I know that the mods, whatever they choose, will do a great job. Yeah. So I saw a lot of people's reasoning for saying sailing was because Dungeoneering was really good and everyone liked it. But they didn't like that it was so stationary. It's like existence was so stationary. And mm -hmm. so they like wanted to go to different islands and spawn different bosses. And there would also be wood cutting and also fishing and also fire making. I'm like, kind of sounds fun. At what point does this end? Like, you're just, I mean, that's just a new game at this point. I think you do. I mean, that might be too extra to be fair. But I think you definitely have to find ways that how will other skills be incorporated into it? Because every skill in the game that I could think of off the top of my head. Like, connects to at least one other skill. Yeah, I think the good ones do. Yeah. So, I, I do agree, but I just think, like... That's too much. People are trying to combine so many skills that it kind of just makes your skill not really a skill, and it's mm -hmm. actually just the combination of other skills. That's which why is, I feel like I can't come up with a skill my own, because I literally don't know how to make up a new skill. Yeah. <laughs> like, if, if sailing was just sailing, I guess that would be cool, but the way pretty much everyone proposes it is it's actually fire making crafting, dungeoneering, uh, fire making, wood cutting, boss killing, slayer. Like it's it's so many skills in one that it's Too just much. not its own skill. Yeah. But um, those are the two that I saw mainly that were really from Reddit. The other ones I kind of just made up myself so they might suck, but I, I think they're really cool. I'll start off with the ones that I think are the most coolest and the most... Get worse as you talk. <laughs> yeah, the most like legitimate as far as they could actually easily be skills. And we should say he was coming up with the most dramatic sounding names he could think of because he thinks... And I think this is fair, that branding in the name of the skill will be huge in whether or not people are interested. Yeah. Like I... saying animal husbandry is different than saying like mounts. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly like that's what a lot of like that's why i think a lot of the ideas seemed really dumb on reddit because like obviously a lot of them are suggestions if you just go on reddit but they're just and maybe they lack creativity but they just like make me. them sound really boring or yeah. like that's why bad. i'm like that's why i'm kind of excited to hear once like uh developers start like fleshing out ideas more because they're literally paid because they're creative and know how to like design stuff yeah so I'm, i can't i cannot wait to start hearing some of their proposals <laughs> yeah so yeah, my, the first one that i thought was really cool was going to be um a combination of magic as well as prayer mm -hmm. and so you would have prayer abilities you'd be able to level it through prayer type things giving up offerings and you would also have magics and so this is this could either be uh one thing or there's another suggestion as well, and I would just call this dark arts. So it, prayer and magic, but make it emo. Yeah. So obviously <laughs> we already have prayer and stuff like that, but we also have, I mean, dark prayers to you know darker gods and stuff like that. There's yeah. already types of summoning of dead beings, so that's why I was kind of in between dark arts and calling it like necromancy. But 
I would, wouldn't. Necromancy is getting added to RuneScape 3, and I literally don't know how it works, but just like how you were saying, God, the name sounds so cool. Yeah. Like, I don't know how you skill it and train it, but I like it. <laughs> I think both names are really cool, but the reason I called it Dark Arts is because it wouldn't just be focused on necromancy or summoning of undeads. Mm -hmm. It would actually also include you know, dark prayers, yeah. dark rituals, as well as dark magics. So it'd be I like it. quite a few things. I don't know how it'd work, but I like it. <laughs> I think it'd be cool because, like I said earlier, it's not so many different fighting styles. It's really just prayer and magic, but with mm -hmm. a dark nuance. Yeah. So I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, the next thing that I think is also a really good uh, front runner that I actually seen a lot of similar ideas was something that... Um, I don't know necessarily what to call it, but it would be called either either um, like scholarship or scholarly, yes. something like that. We talked about this like at length. <laughs> yeah, because this is actually something that um, was a big deal back in the day. Um, reading and writing was something that the nobility did mm -hmm. back in, you know, obviously during times that OSRS would have existed <laughs> 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 in like nights and stuff like that. Like if you could read and write, Potentially, you could have new quests available to you, or new, uh, like new, um, like new skills, or you know, new people that you could talk to because you could actually, you know, read and write languages properly. I'm trying to think of how you would train this, and I was thinking like the Archaeus Library, how you go and like pick books like that. They could do something like that, at, similar to agility courses in like different libraries throughout Gilinor. Just yeah. be like, at a certain level, you go and grab books at this place. Yeah, maybe. Or, yeah, it could it could include mainly the way of leveling. It would be reading and writing. And then as you did more, you could unlock new things to read and write. And I wonder this how you would, do it um... without being AFK. <laughs> I mean, I want to be AFK, but I know that they don't want us to be AFK. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe they could add, like, a minigame for matching words in the book to, like, words that you learn and stuff like, like that. Actually, like, games like that. I would play that. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, just play like Sudoku or do a crossword puzzle. Yeah, not only <laughs> is it realistic, but it could, you know, unlock additional things as you gained fluency in languages. And it, it doesn't have to be limited to one language as well. So I like that. Yeah, I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, and the last thing, there, there's, I do have a few, quite a few suggestions, so I'll just rattle them off and then... I have a couple too, which are funny. Yeah, I'll... I have I'll, like two. <laughs> I'll end with my... Um, with the one that I, I personally like the most. Okay. So. Um, Our list is very chaotic. So sorry if we sound all over the place. Yeah. So the first one. So I'll just rattle them off. So this next one's called Divinity. Mm -hmm. And this is a a very prayer oriented. Uh, I You can either call this Divinity or Zealotry. And this is just extreme faith in the gods. And so this would make it so like you could only use certain prayers or certain extremely holy weapons, like maybe Saradomen drops like you know a very buff for the sword or something. Yeah, like uh, like a sword that is so holy you can't look at it unless you have like a certain level of zealotry because you're so devout. Yeah, um, stuff like that, or maybe prayers that are just again you're so close to God that maybe you can't even fathom using it without having such high. Um, divinity, you know, yeah, they could like think that. of cool little, new little prayers. <laughs> yeah, um, another thing would be uh, alchemy. So this would be something that allows you to buff yourself or debuff enemies, and you could even use it as a weapon, throwing bottles of essentially poison at the enemy. Mm -hmm. So it'd be a new throwable type weapon. Maybe that could be like a joint XP with herbal or depending on it too. Yeah, exactly. And of course, divinity you could level. It would require not just divinity skill, but also a certain level of prayer mm -hmm. to use that skill. Um, and the last thing I think could maybe be. Um, archaeology and socialite. So yeah. ar archaeology, obviously, I think it exists in other games where you're just, you know, finding, picking up stuff. Which is fun. Getting, I think it's fun. <laughs> you know, yeah, getting like cool texts and stuff like that, like old weapons that are, you're digging up, old armor. And then uh, Maybe, socialite like, would them. be kind of cool because it works in the same way where like you're increasing your influence with people and, um, you know, getting new titles as you rank up which gives you access to new people and maybe they'll give you new access to new shops yeah. or new quests or um, 
just new items in general. So I think that'd be kind of cool. One of them that kind of goes with your socialite, I did steal this a little bit from Twitter, would be like influence or what my part of adding to this is charisma because I've been playing a lot of Sims 3 and they have charisma. Yeah. And this, I don't know like how it would work long term, but I was thinking like early on, it could be similar to the Ring of Heroes. Like you get like discounts on like ships and different travel, but like think of stuff that's more boring, like maybe a discount at like the rune shop in Varrock or something like that. And then over time, maybe it could be, like, used to unlock, like, new Slayer dungeons or something. Mm -hmm. Or, like, a boss. I don't know. Just something that, like, I don't even know how it would be trained. Like I said, I'm not good at creative things. Yeah. But I feel like that's something that they could really do something with that idea. Yeah. Yeah. And that it could connect to a lot of skills. Yeah. Yeah. The other one I thought of that was hilarious that literally sounds like a meme in this list. So we're talking about what you could do for combat. Is it hand to hand combat? Hand to hand. So like Jiu Jitsu. A monk. So like oh wait, a, no. Okay, it's like a monk would be. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking more like <laughs> a cough. like a Shaolin monk. No way. I just said like Jiu Jitsu like as you said a monk. I was trying to think about what it could be. So like instead of attack strength and defense being like punching, it would be like its own thing. I don't think it's a great idea. I just wanted to feel like I came up with something on my own. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool because then you could kind of try and tie it to prayer as well because... I mean, maybe... if you're a monk, that would work with prayer. Yeah, exactly. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> it just sounds silly to say, like, that my character's just jacked. Just punching stuff? Yeah, just punching stuff. Kicking, yeah. roundhouse kicks, karate. Yeah. Add karate to the game. You Add won't karate. Cowards. Another one that uh, Ninja posted on Discord, racing. Racing, easy. there yeah. you go. Race cars, easy peasy. Drifting your horse. Drifting. <laughs> um, the last one and my personal favorite one um, would be, and again, I've seen a lot of people summing up a lot of skill ideas as invention in uh, in RS3. I've never played RS3. I don't know what invention is, but mm -hmm. I feel like chalking everything up to the word invention is just a really cheap cop out. Like, well, because in a way you could consider crafting invention. You could consider yeah, herbal or smithing. It's like, oh, you made something. That's just invention. I'm like, all right, let's calm down because this is a different I think game. you have to be more specific. Yeah. So along those lines, I was thinking of a skill called machination or... Oh, yeah. I forgot the way you, how you called it. Yeah, which is just you could look it up it's just a word similar to like the creation of machinery mm -hmm. and so um it would be similar to crafting but in a way that is specifically oriented for combat i like it so you could like use it to create um turrets and stuff like that or you could use it to create things that help you um in other ways it doesn't exactly have to be combat oriented i mean well also stuff like the fortified Missouri, rather than making that smithing or crafting or whatever, they could change it to be you use this skill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So you could use it to kind of, I guess, invent uh, little things to help you in various ways throughout your journeys, whether that be in combat, it could be used to like maybe you create like a spray bot that sprays like a buff on you or something like that. Or just like a turret that, like I said, like shoots an enemy, kind of like a cannonball, but obviously not as strong or anything like that. But um, I think that'd be cool to use it in combat, but also you could use it outside of combat using like really useful small bots to like help you, I don't know, do other things, I guess. Um, there's a lot of ways mm -hmm. I think you could take this. It could maybe... This is something that they could totally expand on in a cool way. Yeah, exactly. And it's, like I said, it's similar to crafting, so maybe you'd need crafting level to go along with it. Yeah, you got to think of ways to incorporate other skills. Uh, either way, it's kind of unfortunate because the game's been out for so long, it's hard to come up with an original idea because mm -hmm. my favorite three are Dark Arts, Animal Husbandry, and Machination. But all three of those are similar to stuff that's already in RS3 being... You're just changing and making them more specific. Yeah, being uh, summoning, necromancy, and um, invention. I mean, obviously, they're all similar, but I think mine are cooler because they're more <laughs> RS, OSRS. Because themed. they're yours. <laughs> uh, I think mine are more... You have cooler names than, like, invention. Well, yeah. I'll give you that for sure. I, I, feel I don't like know how they work in those. Mine's, mine's cooler because... They're more OSRS themed to me. Yeah, that's true. Whereas I mean, like 
like summoning just sounds like so otherworldly. It just sounds like a different game. Summoning to me just sounds like you tell an animal to bring you food and you never have to leave a dungeon. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, don't know how I don't know how it works. That's what it sounds like. Was so busted. From the little I know about it, it not only gives you crazy buffs for damage, but also just doubles your inventory. So it's Love just it. like it just sounds so wild. Like how did they let that happen? It's too much. Yeah. Too much. <laughs> But, yeah, I think that's all we have to say on the scale. We would love to know what you guys think. Respond yeah. to us anywhere and tell us what skills you like. Yeah, and also don't reply with just, like, sailing. Like, <laughs> or if you want to do sailing, expand on it a little bit. Yeah, like, maybe you have a good version of we're, sailing in your mind. We're really, I'm not the most creative. Be creative for me. Help me. Help yeah. me envision it. I don't know how sailing would work. <laughs> but, yeah, like I said, none of those are necessarily fleshed out. That's just what we thought of just on some the ideas. drive to Disneyland. So. I'm sure if you gave us more time, we could come up with something more serious, but we just Not try to me. come up with as many things as possible. Somebody listening right now, these are stupid. I know. So def <laughs> definitely a few people listening were like, wow, I guess I'm done because these are dumb ideas. I know. But that's Bad okay. Apple review pod or podcast review coming soon. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Uh, moving on, though, to Desert big news. Treasure, The Fallen Empire. So this is a new quest that they proposed, Desert Treasure yeah, 2. A sequel. Obviously, Desert Treasure 1 is one of the most iconic and most, um, actually, one of the best quests because of not just the, the quest itself, but the rewards. The reward you unlock the ancient spellbook. Ancient spellbook, yeah. Can I say, I don't remember the quest at all. Yeah. I remember it was annoying. I don't remember going to Mauritania. And I mentioned it on stream last night. And they're like, yeah, you go there to get like a blood diamond. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. I don't. It all sounds fake to me. I don't remember this. <laughs> so they um, they did actually have an entire like short video on a YouTube. A little trailer. Um, yeah, teasing this. And it's actually a really good, well done video. Dude, their trailers have gotten so good this year. Yeah. I love much, them. Much better quality for sure. But um, as the name suggests, we're picking up where Desert Treasure left off 17 years ago to delve deeper into the enigmatic Majorat and the history of a long forgotten empire. Hey. We've been paving the way for this Grand Master quest for almost two years with Below Ice Mountain, Temple of the Eye, the Garden of Death, and in the not too distant future, Secrets of the North, which is also a new quest. I didn't know. I haven't read this entire thing. I didn't know that the Garden of Death was going to be related to it because the Garden of Death, the lore was very interesting, especially now that I know it's related to this. Yeah. So they continue saying that. So you had four quests to pave the way, introducing four new areas to explore. You'd best be prepared to fight four ferocious new bosses. If you're to have even the faintest hope of uncovering the secrets beneath the Caridian Desert. Wait. For taking on the Whisperer, Duke Succulus, Vardovis... <laughs> And the <laughs> Leviathan. I, I don't know how to say it, but succulus sounds funny. Succulus? Susilus. <laughs> you think it you think there's a uh, Duke Susilus. No. Uh yeah. And the Leviathan. Regardless of how you say any of those <laughs> names, that's what I'm going with. I love how you went back to your official voice. I'm gonna have to keep it all in. I interrupted you to say Susilus. <laughs> you gain access to old school's first ever alternative prayer book. <gasps> The Ruinous Powers. Dang it. See, I didn't know about this. We we came up with this idea first to do an alternative prayer book. No, yeah. I did come up with my ideas first, and then I read this and was like... Well, this, technically, they did first. We just didn't know that they said it. This kind of, I feel like, even solidifies some of my alternate prayer book combat styles even more because it'll already exist. Be a thing. Yeah. There will already be alternate prayer stuff in there the There would game. be a predecessor to it. Yeah. So I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh, they do say that now it's a bit too early to go into specifics, but we can tell you that we plan to work with the community to, to devise a powerful new set of prayers. You have to weigh up the familiarity of the prayers you know and love against the thrill of tapping into forces best left forgotten. This sounds like you have time perfectly with your dark arts idea. Are you kidding me? Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, either way, for anyone that doesn't want spoilers, there's going to be a few quest requirements. Skip a few minutes. Um, so it's going to be Desert Treasure 1, Secrets of the North, Anakra's Lament, Temple of the Eye, The Garden of Death, Below Ice Mountain. So those are the quests you need. You're also going to have some more uh, requirements, one of them being prayer. They haven't initially said what their requirements are, but it's going to be recommended of a combat level of at least 100. Okay. 
They do preface this by saying, while they're still in the early stages and haven't locked down our designs, it's worth remembering that this is a Grand Master quest. If you faced Galvik or the Fragment of Saren, you'll know how tough they can be. We plan to make these ancient horrors even tougher. Why? Because I also <laughs> forgot to mention, they plan on adding the Whisperer, Duke Susilus, <laughs> and Vardovis, as well as the Leviathan, as being unlockable, repeatable bosses oh. asked after you've finished the quest. All of them? All of them. Oh. The fearsome foursome would come oh, bundled that. with some exciting new uniques to be determined at a later date, including the iconic Virtus Robes. Hey so these are items from RS3, of course. And the quest would unlock um, huge XP lamps, um, the new ruinous powers, as well as the four bosses. The huge XP lamp would literally be potentially 100,000 per XP. Yeah. Massive. So it could be a lot. Um, either way, there are some poll questions related to this. Those are live right now, but I think that they end shortly. So go check immediately. Yeah. <laughs> and Secrets of the North is the new quest that we're uh, moving into. This is the one that they just mentioned. This is the mysterious quest from past weeks, right? This is the mysterious quest. Hey. If you've caught the Winter Summit, you'll have seen that the mysterious quest, quote unquote, we've talked about. The one so that was about, annoying you? Ha yeah, it had. <laughs> has been named Secrets of the North. You have to take this one off the quest list before being able to take on Desert Treasure 2, so best keep on reading. While you don't have any more to pull for Secrets of the North, we can share a few tidbits of information. One, it'll be coming out on January 11th. Wait, so that's so soon. Very, very soon. Oh my god, I'm actually so glad that we're recording this late because I didn't have the anticipation of having to wait as long. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, make sure you have the requirements, which are just here. Again, skip if you do not want to be spoiled. You're going to need to have done Making Friends with My Arm, The General's Shadow, Devious Minds, Hazel Cult, as well as a few skill requirements being 69 Agility, 64 Thieving, 56 Hunter, and a recommended combat level of 85. It'll give a generous amount of Agility, Thieving, and Hunting, as well as a repeatable solo-only boss. Interesting. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, they already did, obviously, um, pull all of these things for the boss so we already know what the boss drops it drops the new phantom essence bloodletter shard and bow the soul blight icon and scepter as well as the magister's brew nice and those are all now going to have uh different names those were their secret names those are the secret names now it's called the in order ancient essence venator or venator shards and bow not as close cool bloodletter to be honest uh, yeah yeah Ancient Icon and Scepter, as well as Forgotten Brew. Forgotten Brew sounds pretty cool. Yeah, so all of these <laughs> things, for anyone that doesn't know, Ancient Essence can um, enhance the other items, uh, as well as your um, imbued heart. Uh, the Venerator Shards and Bow are just the new bow. It's a charged <laughs> bow, so that's why it has the shards. As well as the Ancient Icon and Scepter, I think is a charged scepter. If I remember correctly, I could be wrong. And then also the Forgotten Brew. Which is a new Mage Brew, right? It's a new Mage Brew that does decrease your other combats as well. Yeah. It's been a long time since we talked about this, so I'm like, I don't even remember. Yeah. And for everyone that um, feels like you don't ever get any PvP updates because you don't, uh, here is one that you may or may not get in the next three years, which is Bounty Hunter. Burr, 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 burr. Bounty Hunter is how I made my first mill. Somebody said, people were always like offering to pay to kill you because of the rewards. And I was like, yo, you could kill me for a mill. And someone gave me a million gold and they killed me. Yeah. And that's how I made my first mill. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so um, that's one of the reasons it was taken away is because it was being highly abused. Yeah, like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> they probably also, made so much more money. Yeah, also it just wasn't a really well done system in general. So they took it away for the previous couple of years. And now hopefully they're going to be bringing it back. You'll notice that we're not seeking a green light. Or bounty hunter itself since we've already promised to bring it back mm -hmm. however we plan to involve the community in several rounds of polling to get the final content just right we want to work with all of you to build something that disincentivizes shady behavior <laughs> while rewarding <laughs> players who engage with the content in good faith in hopes of returning this much maligned minigame to its former glory for those not in the know, Bounty Hunter pits players who fancy a spot of PvP action against others of similar combat levels, with similar amounts of wealth at stake. You step into an area, get assigned your bounty, and hunt them down. 
Killing your bounty acts like any other PvP kill. You get whatever items they weren't protecting, plus a little extra reward for dispatching your target. Hey. In the summit, we also proposed bringing back bounty hunter craters. These first appeared in 07, bundled with the removal of wilderness PvP. Fortunately for PKers, we're not planning to block PvP everywhere else this time, and the addition of craters will not massively change the overworld map of the wilderness. So, seems like they're hopefully going to be adding this in back pretty soon. Um, they don't say when, I don't think, unless I skipped it. But they do say that they want the reward system to feel worthwhile for actively engaged PKers without incentivizing gold farmers to ruin everyone else's fun. Is that me on accident? In yeah, it was. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> In doing so, we might just open up account builds that have been seen since the earliest days of OSRS. Could this be the glorious return of the twenty defense accounts? Oh, who knows? Uh, emblems and kill streaks are also key elements, allowing players to opt in to extra risk and challenge themselves to rack up rewards. So, they are hopefully bringing this back better than ever. I don't. Again, I don't think they said when it'll be back. Or I actually want to interrupt you there. At the beginning of the page, I don't think you noticed, they did have a roadmap. They're hoping that Bounty Hunter okay. will be out in spring. Yeah, they have a roadmap, and we'll go over what they have here, but I don't trust any of it, especially yeah. when it comes to PvP. We'll tell you everything at the end, but Bounty Hunter, at least, it says spring of 2023. Yeah, so it says spring, <laughs> but uh, I'll, see you we'll in, see. I'll see you in September. We'll see. This one I, I haven't even read about, but I'm just interested in because it sounds fun. Yeah, this is cool. This is just straight up a improvement and buff to woodcutting. Called Forestry. Called Forestry, the way of the forester. And there's a little bit of a teaser trailer for it. That again looks very scenic and beautiful. And it should be coming out relatively soon next year. So uh, introducing Forestry, a woodcutting expansion that we will see uh, interacting with Gilnor's flora and fauna in ways you've never seen before. Hey. Forestry aims to make woodcutting a more social experience by removing resource competition, introducing new events, and expanding the skill's economic offerings. Best of all, every one of these features can be found in the wild. On every part of the map, where there are trees, there's forestry. I just love the idea of making woodcutting more fun, because I am cutting redwoods right now, and you don't even look at your screen. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, to get started, you'll pick up a forestry kit from none other than the freaky forester <laughs> himself. You have to talk to the random people now. <laughs> yeah. Then, while cutting trees, you'll have the chance to encounter a forestry event, chasing away poachers, culling the pheasant population, rehoming bees, or even giving a friendly tree ant a stylish haircut. Oh my god. You may also encounter the forest's more mysterious inhabitants, who just happen to be inclined to hand over special rewards for helping them maintain their home. This is cute. Rewards and XP from forestry will scale with the woodcutting level so that players can play together at any level without missing out. We'll also adjust tree despawning so that groups up so that grouping up is no longer punished <laughs> and perhaps even give bonuses when more people are cutting the same tree. You know, I didn't think about that. It's actually, it is very discouraged to go and woodcut with friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. That's so strange. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, it's not exactly the same, but they have a really cool thing in Lost Ark. Whenever you are woodcutting out in the world and someone else comes up to woodcut with you, instead of just both of you having axes, you'll then change into one, one two, of those long axes? one two person saw yeah! and saw it down faster. Oh my together. god! Wait, that's what I meant when I said axe. That's really funny. Yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> just a dragon one. Yeah. So rewards include leaves, a new resource that you'll collect alongside logs, and used to build special foresters, campfires, or brew fancy artisanal teas packed with healthy nutrients and buffs. That's adorable. What about the economic offerings we mentioned? <laughs> uh, we'd like to introduce a new forestry currency that can be used alongside with logs to purchase unique rewards and components for your forestry kit. So probably some handy Iron Man things. Yeah. But if you are already well stocked, you'll be better off selling these components to other players. If you're especially good at other productions or gathering skills, you may even make them for yourself and sell them on for profit. Obviously, you want to work with the community to refine the more unique rewards, but we have a handful of ideas to start with, including equipable log baskets, Love this. two handed axes, a bee box for your player owned house, and perhaps even a way to obtain the lumberjack outfit without hanging around a stinking swamp for hours on end. 
Yeah, it is a really random place to get that outfit. It is really weird. <laughs> you that'd just be... kill zombies for a woodcutting outfit? Yeah, that'd be kind of <laughs> like, all right, time to go get my farming outfit. I guess I got to go uh, fight scarabs. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. it's just so unrelated. It's really, it's really funny. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really weird. I like the idea of having multiple ways to get it, too. I didn't realize that you can get the uh, angler's outfit in multiple ways, either. Yeah. Yeah, so it, may, it makes sense for outfits to have more than one ways to get yeah, seems pretty cool. And I like this. You know what I was thinking as you talked more? I didn't know much detail about this. I just heard community woodcutting, and I was like, that sounds adorable. And I heard the giving an end a haircut, and I thought it was a joke. So I love this. It's kind of like a vegan update. <laughs> okay. It is an accident. Yeah, I guess so. I do think it's funny that one of the things is to fight off poachers when we also have hunting and we are the poachers. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, whatever. They do say that, although they're excited about all the possibilities forestry has um we do hope you are also excited and we'll bring more details to share in the coming year but for now they do need to get green thumbed gamers to give us the green light so this may or may not even exist depending on how you vote this is part of the poll that's currently active so go vote as soon as you can because i feel like it's done soon i don't know the exact date but it's been up for a second yeah and so this next thing i think might be the last thing but this is um Pretty exciting for yeah. a lot of players. And this is going to be official account builds. And we actually are going to skip their original post because they've already updated this. They did already update this. But for yeah. anyone that wants to get the gist of what this is, essentially the same way that they made uh, speed running an official part of the game, a lot of people have been playing an unofficial part of the game for a long time, being specific builds, whether that Peers. means you're a pure a skiller, or just very low HP. Uh, Regardless of what type of account you're playing, usually it has some very strict restrictions on it. And uh, But unfortunately, because that it's not officially implemented, you could easily ruin that just by completing a certain... One misclick. Yeah, completing a wrong quest or accidentally having some type of combat on that you weren't supposed to. Oh, that'd be so annoying. You could easily ruin thousands of hours of work. And this is hopefully going to circumvent that and make it much more official. There is some surprising feedback of people who don't want that, though. That's why they've already made an update to this post. Yes, yes, of course there is. Of course there is. <laughs> but um, we can actually take a look at that now. So we'll first start off by talking about 10 hit point accounts. So one of the officially recognized builds we were offering support for were the so-called 10 hit point peers. As the name suggests, these are accounts that limit themselves to 10 HP, but still seek to level up all the other combat stats in unique and interesting ways. These unique and interesting training methods have been a topic of much discussion since the existence of 10 HP communities have spent years painstakingly theory crafting and perfecting niche methods to level up some seriously impressive trophy accounts. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like the poison dynamite that we were talking about. Yeah, it's like the poison dynamite. It's like all of the, you know, really weird accounts that take years and years to do. Like they just do XP lamps. Because I mean, (laughs) if, if you think about it, a 10 hit point account that has 99 slayer has done so much more work and weird niche things that you probably couldn't even fathom as like a regular player Mm -hmm. that um i think that's the main thing is they don't want their own hard work to be diminished by something that makes it much easier yeah they couldn't somehow give them recognition as being like ogs yeah i think they could just (laughs) include them into different high scores but yeah but there is some controversy between what they're offering because they don't want people to basically be able to quickly scale everything else yeah because initially they did say that if you for example wanted a 10 hit point account that would be fine and you could still use items like the DSIM or any other weapon and just like turn off and just turn off the ability to get hit point XP, which would make your adventure much smoother and much faster. Yeah. Some people are just afraid it's going to like disregard the very unique grindy things that they did, which is understandable. Yeah. That's why I I am curious if they would be okay with just having like some form of recognition on their account. Yeah. Cause like, I mean, like Like I said, if you, if you saw a 10 hit point account with 99 Slayer, that's a big deal. Not many of those exist. Yeah. That's awful. Yeah. But, (laughs) If this was implemented, then that wouldn't be that crazy of a thing. Mm -hmm. It would still be impressive, just not nearly as much. Yeah. So they do say it's difficult for us to disagree with these reasonings. And as such, we've made changes to the system before it goes live for polling next week. Which is live now. 
We've decided that for now, we won't be offering restrictions for hit points, with official account builds at least. This doesn't mean that we can't revisit hit point restrictions in the future, but we do, but if we do, then we'd like to ensure it's with existing builds and training methods in mind. Mm -hmm. Another official build we spoke of was level three skillers, also known as skiller peers. With official account builds, skillers cannot gain any combat experience, as they would still be locked to 10 hit points and unable to progress in any combat related skills. We've decided to keep them in the system. Yeah. I think That's overall fair, this was... they can't was, get Slayer, I'm assuming. Because um, they say nothing combat yeah, related. Yeah, I don't think so. So either way, I think this seems like a really good idea to walk this back. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, that's like one of the most, in my opinion, obviously I'm just a person, but that's like one of the most prestigious accounts. Yeah. Is to have like a crazy low hit point, you know, max everything else account. That's just, when you see that, that's like... Like, finding oh like my a, god a needle how did you do that yeah it's like a needle in a haystack that's like yeah, such a very, wild thing very very snowflake account yeah that's like like obviously being like locked to a certain area or you know having like interesting pking accounts are cool but that's like a real this like serious dedication yeah real grind <laughs> a lot account. of like they said like theory crafting and perfecting really niche things yeah um yeah so i i overall i think that's a really good decision to to do that yeah they need to do something like for like thinking of other account builds like if you are a 10 defense fear whatever the defense is i don't know how fears work yeah then like how frustrating it'd be if you just accidentally have the shared xp on and you just like ruin your account immediately yeah i think it's a good idea to like I think, block it I, i'm not i'm still not sure if they would be okay with it but i think it would be way more okay with me if they made it so like og 10 hit point accounts had like like a really sick indication like next to it could be like just somehow prestige mark like a star or something yeah like or maybe, like a heart if like they, a gold heart if they didn't have their own leaderboard which i think would just probably be the best mm -hmm. i think it'd be cool if they were on the leaderboard and had like you know like a red star next to their name or like like yeah. a crown next to their name or something, a something heart cool because it's a heart get it Hit yeah like, a, like a, <laughs> maybe like a golden heart or something cool yeah next that'd to be their cute name. i think that'd be cool because That's, this is the only one that they're not going to do by the way they they seem at least what i understand they're gonna still pull doing they are still currently pulling the other kinds of account yeah builds it, and it does seem like the hit points the weird one the only one weird one it, it does seem like from their very small interface they teased you could still be able to um like turn off or turn on what types of combat experience you can get so if you wanted to be an attack peer mm -hmm. for whatever reason or more likely a defense peer like you'll just or you'll do like high defense and nothing else then you could do that. Yeah. But just not the hit points one. Yeah. Um, they did have additional clarification for anyone wondering. They said that a handful of concerns around one defense peers gaining access to gear or spell books that would offer them huge spikes in power. In case it wasn't clear before, restricted builds will not be able to complete quests or equip gear that they lack requirements for. I mean, that's already what they have so yeah no so changes there this was saying that for anyone wondering like if you did witch's house on a pretend 10 hp pure you wouldn't get the witch's house hp xp mm -hmm. and you would no longer be able to go on and do quests that require like 20 hit points yeah that you still can't do the that. reason that this is a big differentiation is because there's no requirements to do witch's house mm -hmm. you just simply get hp experience but for them here, they're saying that this means that a one defense peer could not ever complete a lunar diplomacy quest because it has a hard requirement of 40 defense. So as long so as even it though has, it's turning off doesn't mean that you're ignoring requirements anyway. <laughs> yeah, so the requirements are still there. So you could still do it. Let's say pretend that you wanted to be a strength peer. You could still do waterfall quest because there's no requirements you just simply wouldn't get the strength experience you'd get the attack experience only yeah and it wouldn't be like doubled or anything it wouldn't be doubled <laughs> and again it's because there's no requirements on the quest yes so yeah that's um a, a main clarification that they wanted to bring up um but yeah so that, i think that's about it finally we wanted yeah. to dig a little deeper into the I idea of prestige 
and high scores. So kind of what we were just talking about. So prestige on a restricted account is a status granted to accounts which have never gained a level's worth of XP in a skill that they are locked out of. So this is kind of interesting because this is kind of what we were talking about. Like, let's say if you were a defense peer, you wouldn't get prestige if you did a defense quest. Mm-hmm. Because, they have an example using Fremenix Trials right here. Yeah, so it means that if you're a skiller but you completed Fremenix Trials, you would have received several thousands of combat experience. You would lose your prestige status while on while an account that's never or blocked more than 82 XP in any combat skill would remain a prestige account. So um, essentially, those are accounts that... Would, Play the OG way, kind of. Yeah, that would have done it the OG way regardless. I, I think that's an interesting way of doing it, is that they're like, yeah, you can do this now and you'll get XP, but we'll all know that you did something that normally would have gotten XP. <laughs> yeah, so we know that you're playing a different way. Yeah, exactly. You're playing the new way. Yeah, which is, you know, different. And I they, mean, it's not no golden heart like we want, but... They, they do say that <laughs> prestige and non-prestige accounts would share the same high scores meaning skillers who complete Priest in Peril would share the same leaderboards as skillers who have never heard of Combat XP. Currently, there are technical limitations that prevent us from separating accounts in this way, but we also feel like the number of high score tables needed to accommodate Prestige and non-Prestige variants would, for each different game mode would lead to an undesirable amount of bloat. <laughs> so, like, essentially everyone having their own Prestige page at that point. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's kind of interesting. I don't know how I feel about it, but it's an interesting thing for peers to think about. I like it, but I don't have a peer account. So I voted yes because a majority of the stuff I saw for people with unique accounts were saying to vote yes. But I also some people say, saw some people saying vote no. So Yeah, it does say that I don't even know how on, it'll uh, end. They, they did say that even on shared high score pages, though, you'll be able to tell the difference between a prestige and non-prestige account. So there will be some differentiation. Yes. And uh, there's nothing to say that you won't be able to offer more advanced filtering options, but they don't plan on having entirely separate high score pages for each. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of like what we were saying with the golden heart and stuff like that, but just for skilling. Yeah. Overall, though, I think that is about it. It's been... We have a QA, and a but this is like a two hour long episode nearly. It's over two and a half, two hours. We'll see after editing. We'll see. There is um, some stuff that I messed up really bad. Yeah, it was funny. (laughs) Either way, there was a lot to go over, and even with that being said, there was a lot we there was, skipped over. We didn't even go over everything. Yeah, so um, that's just a time thing. We didn't really want to spend four hours on a new episode, even if that's what some of you might have wanted. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> we, we don't have time for that. We did kind of try and keep it summed up for the sake of brevity, so uh, let us know what you think. If you would have preferred us to spend a million hours on the episode, let us know. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we'll try to keep our episodes around the the shorter time if possible yeah hour and a half or less is preferred yeah hour just and a for half, editing too hour and a half to two i think is the best spot but i know some people have said they want longer episodes but again let us know if that's really something you want yeah uh we do have two questions that have literally been sitting here for over a month so this is going to be from matt on instagram if you were to change the most popular say in RuneScape, where everything happens, so right now that'd be like Varrock, where would you choose and why? He said that he would choose Port Sarum, but the port would have to be enlarged and have ships sailing in and out a lot. Historically, port cities in medieval times have always been massive areas for trades, events, and generally highly populated areas, so I think it'd make great sense. Yeah. Also, imagine hearing Sea Shanty 2 even more often. <laughs> that would be, uh, that's probably the biggest plus for me. I thought it was cute, and it's like a free-to-play area, but I was imagining somewhere that it takes a second to unlock, and I was thinking like Letia. Because okay. I feel like Letia, if it was expanded quite, similarly... Quite a while to it, unlock. It would, yeah, okay. At least it's not Perfectness. Yeah. It would take a while to unlock, so, I mean, it wouldn't work at all. But I just think it would look like really pretty, because it reminds me of like a farmer's market, if it was expanded and having like stalls and stuff. Yeah, I, I, do, think like, that'd be cute. I do like how they have the second floor in Letia. I didn't even think about the second floor. Yeah, they got yeah. shops in there, like a bank up there. Cool. I think there the area is cool, but it's, it's just a pretty area. The unlock is crazy. The unlock is crazy. Okay, I know. <laughs> I know it is. <laughs> um, mine would, without a doubt, be Ardoin. Um, oh, that's, that makes way more it's sense. It's already than I. one of the most popular areas with some of the best training for they have several a lot of skills. Skilling there, yeah. Yeah, best some of the best thieving training, some of the best agility training. It also has a port. And everyone can teleport there for free if you have the Ardoin Why are you going to one-up my Letya? And on top of that, 
some of no the most unlocked. some of the most iconic quests are there, including a lot of the beginning of the elves quest as you well. Mean it leads to let you. It does. <laughs> yeah. So I think that would be really cool. That's and, actually really uh, good. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'll choose that. That's a good one. Our next question is from Hariger on Discord. And what is your favorite OSRS official merch item? Personally, they'd want to buy the OSRS soundtrack classics on vinyl and a party hat key ring. Um, mine by far that I always mention whenever I look at it is the puzzle of the map of Gilmore. Oh, that's I cool. I love that. I like doing puzzles. I never do puzzles because we don't have a big table. Whenever the we last do, puzzle we not did. not as big as. Not big enough for puzzles. Not big as 2,000 piece puzzles. The last puzzle that we did, we had to keep it on two different tables. And we're like, all right, I need this color. Let's go look for blue on the other table. Yeah. Like 10 feet away. Not even right next to it. But uh, yeah, I think that one's fun. Another one that has stuck with me for over a year was last year. There was, I think it was a Galvic Christmas sweater. Mm. And I still remember that because I loved it. Yeah. So that was another one. <laughs> I was going to say something similar is um, I like a lot of their sweaters or as they call them in the UK, jumpers. Their jumpers. Yeah. A lot of their sweaters, I think, look really good. Mm -hmm. Like their Christmas sweaters, I think, look cool. They They're really nice. They could easily be. They look comfy too. Yeah. They look comfy. They look well made. They could easily be um, like just a regular Christmas sweater if people didn't realize it's definitely like a if you know you know situation. Yeah, exactly. Um, same thing with their Halloween sweaters. I think all of those look really they well had done. Halloween sweaters. Yeah, they did. Oh, I and, don't remember. Uh, yeah, so overall, I think a lot of them look really cool. Do you have a favorite favorite that you remember, or it's just like in general? You just really in general, like those. I think their sweaters are usually really. They're well really done. nice. Yeah, I like them. Right yeah. now, it's the father gnome child sweater. It's pretty cute. Yeah, like that one looks <laughs> like it's like it's oh very that, unique. That gnome looks pretty weird, or you know. But oh the rest of it looks normal. Whenever I was getting my tattoo, I was joking with her about how the gnome child was so close to winning the poll. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it passed a couple different turns, I think. Yeah. If I remember correctly. But yeah, that usually their sweaters, I think, are really well done. Yeah, no, that's true. Uh, if you guys want to ask your own questions, you can on Twitter. Our Twitter is BoonBabeOSRS. Our Instagram and YouTube are both just BoonBabe. And I stream five days a week at twitch.tv slash BoonBabe. Usually 8 p.m. to around 4 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. But as I'm recovering, it's going to be kind of weird hours. Yeah. I think I'm also probably going to take Christmas off. Probably, unless I get really bored that night, which is possible. Because I'm probably going to be waking highly, up early. Highly possible. It's, yeah, it's actually very possible. Because I feel like Christmas, by the end of the day, you're just like, don't talk to me. Don't look at me. I'm going to do my own thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Potentially stream on Christmas. We'll see. I don't even know if anyone will be around. Yeah. But uh, yeah, ask us questions. Let us know what skills you guys want. Let us know what you want to see in the podcast next year. Because we're, we're ready to make some more changes. You know, maybe put a little bit more effort into it. I yeah, maybe. Definitively say that. This is just a really long episode, so you don't feel kind of motivated right now. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, and you can check out any of the social media as well to see my tattoo. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, feel free to follow us on any of that. Join our Discord community and mm -hmm. um, yeah, just hang Reminder, out in Reminder, holiday giveaway going on Discord right now. That's ending on December 26th, our time. So go enter now if you'd like. Yeah. Um, besides that, though, thanks again for listening. Thanks. This was a longer episode, so let us know Hopefully what you think it's about okay. that. <laughs> yeah, it will be out a little bit late, but uh, we do plan on going back to our regular schedule. So yes. you will probably There's see just an so episode much to less go month. over. Yeah, you'll probably see an episode next week, like normal. Did you see next month? Over? I think I did. <laughs> um, either way, though, thanks again for listening. Thank Hopefully you guys. You all enjoyed it, and we'll see you all very soon. Bye bye. -bye. bye. Meet Merp. The ambitious dwarf has his has his sights set on the hottest pub for NPCs, the Nutcracker. That's what you're like. He has his sights set. I was like, I'm going to sing it again. Yeah, like, has his sights set. <laughs> I noticed it too. <laughs> and then you didn't even say anything that started with an H. You're like, has his sights set. <laughs> it's because I was reading it. It's so hot. Parcel tongue just. <laughs> <laughs>